Hello and welcome back to my channel, What If Deku 2 Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off part 7 of our series, What If Everyone Gets Obsessed With Deku And Had Harem? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Guy Number 23 from FanfictionNet. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Special classes. I have to tell them, but they'll get mad at me. But I have to tell them. Oh man, the girls will Detroit smash me dead. Midoriya, currently under house arrest, was in the middle of an internal conflict whether say the truth to his harem or keep silent. About a week ago he fought with Bakugo and ended being caught by the teachers but the most surprising thing was that Midnight took him to her room and performed some kind of interrogatory and after that they had sex. Yeah things escalated quickly. Not only that, but Midoriya also discovered that MT Lady had a turn with him too while he was asleep. Now the size of the problem he got himself into. Not much longer before this whole mess took place, Midoriya promised to his girlfriends he would not get laid with any girl that decided to make a move on him due to what happened between him and Hatsum. Well, he wasn't expecting this sequence of events at all. In my defense, I was forced on doing it. Midnight herself made it clear that she wanted to provoke me. Also, I was asleep when empty. Lady, still, what Midnight said. The pro-hero stated that he could always use his quirk to escape if he really wanted. Broken limbs were an avoidable situation now. Why didn't he figure it out before? Maybe she was right and Midoriya really wanted to be where he was. He would be lying to himself if he said he didn't like it. Heck, it was probably the best time of his life so far. Not that he didn't have a good time with his harem. In fact, his first time with Yuraraka had a permanent spot on his heart but what Midnight did with him back then was on another level. She was a grown-up and apparently experienced woman after all. Another thing puzzled his mind. Why him, of all people? Midnight Sensei said I was special. It's nice to have people thinking of me like that, but how does it makes a girl want to get laid with me? Modesty aside, I am aware my training routines have an aesthetic result, and Mom always said I had a charm, but this is too much. Wait. Could it be that I'm simply that good to have? No, no, Midnight told me to not get too cocky. Midoriya kept his internal monologue while he cleaned the windows of the common room. After a week, he mastered most of the tasks involving cleaning so the glass looked impeccable and crystal clear. Meanwhile, Bakugo was cleaning the yard with a mildly angered expression that lasted the entire week. Midoriya was also quite upset, but with himself, as he was losing valuable class time being under house arrest. When he wasn't worried about his complex relationship problems, the feeling of being left behind took place to torment his mind. Who knows how much important knowledge he lost during these five days. Speaking of knowledge, during this week, he also avoided bringing up the topic of what happened when Midnight took him from the infirmary and only brought him back past Midnight sound asleep. The next day he woke up and was instantly surrounded by his harem once he came out of his room. They showered him with questions about what happened during the fight, why was he fighting, and the usual checkup on his vital conditions. Seriously, these girls worried too much about him sometimes, but Midoriya learned to love that overprotective side of them, to some extent. Basically, every time they mentioned it, he managed to either walk away or come up with a half-truth or excuse. Lying still wasn't a strong skill of him, but Midoriya managed to avoid addressing the topic quite well. Though the girls didn't know about it, or so he hoped, Midoriya felt guilty because of the promise he made. He really wanted to make this harem thing work, but it was pretty hard when every girl woman you know and some you don't are thirsty and wanting a piece of you. By now the green teen was afraid of interacting with class 1b or even other classes, fearing that he might end in the middle of a legion of horny ladies. Sigh would I manage to handle them all. Seriously, why do I get so much attention? I really hope it doesn't escalate when I turn into a pro hero. What would mom think of it? Wait, if I want to take this seriously, 
How am I supposed to introduce my girlfriend to mom when I have six? Midoriya put his hands on his head, shocked by this realization. The problems were only stacking up. How would he marry them all? Was it even possible? Also, he would have to be very well paid if he planned to sustain six wives and six children at least. Dad, wherever you are, I think I understand you a little better now. Wait just a minute. If he planned to marry all the girls from his harem, where did it leave him concerning Midnight and MT, lady? Hopefully, it would be a one-time thing, but he seriously doubted it. Deep inside he hoped not, but if anyone asked he would deny it to the end. Man, did all might have to deal with this type of problem. What type of problem, cutie? Wah! Midoriya almost jumped when he heard the voice coming out of nowhere. Looking around he saw no one until the set of clothes floating beside him drawn his attention. Here, silly Midori, what happened? Is everything all right? Hagakure asked the still recovering boy. Ha huh, Hagakure, I think my heart stopped for a second. Um, I'm fine, just a bit anxious. I missed a whole week of classes and Aizawa Sensei applied the total secrecy penalty again. Hmm, since it was you and Bakugo fighting again, we are lucky he didn't go with the expel threat again. Don't remind me of that. Well, cheer up. Next Monday you'll be back to action. You're right, I'll just have to make an extra effort. Momechimin. But Midoriya, the classroom looks so empty without you. She leaned close to him, making circles with her index finger on his chest. He felt the soft and warm sensation of her chest pressing against his left arm. I suppose it is loud as usual, he he, he joked nervously. Another thing that Midoriya was avoiding was getting too frisky with them, mostly out of feeling guilty. He was also worried about the possibility of sudden calls to the teacher's room. So far his excuses were working since he really had a lot of tasks to accomplish and by the end of the day he felt exhausted. Well, it could be due to the fact that Midoriya was using almost all his free time exercising, but he wasn't telling the girls that. Midoriya today is Friday so it's my day. I worked hard to do all my homework early so why don't we have some fun tonight? Ah, uh, it seems nice but... I, I still have some tasks to do, you see. Huh? Like what? I have to clean the common room. Here, it's already afternoon, and I just finished cleaning the windows. Toru actually took a minute to admire the immaculate glasses. It was as clear as herself. Hmm, only because you insist on doing things so perfectly, you don't have to work so hard on it. Ida-kun would tell me otherwise. Forget Ida-kun and these lame chores too. I'm feeling lonely, Midoriya. Didn't, didn't you girls spend some time together this week? Actually, yes. Why, you interested? I, I thought that W, while I am busy, you all could, you know, H, have some fun. Yes, it's nice to have sleepovers if you get me. She wiggled her eyebrows, though no one could see. But I'm missing something we all lack. Can you guess what it is? I think I have an idea. So, what do you say, cutie? Just give a quick swipe with the broom, and we have the entire night to get naughty. Her hand was already making its way to between his legs, but Midoriya was quick on reacting and managed to escape her grasp. Uh-uh, I'm in charge of the dishes tonight, and Kakan would kill me if he found the floor with the thinnest layer of dust. Maybe another time. Midoriya walked away stiff like a robot, making a really good impression of the class rep leaving Hagakure behind with her arms crossed and an invisible pout. Saturday was like the final stage of a game and Yuraraka was the boss. Midoriya would have to draw all his cards if he wanted to avoid the brunette today. He on purpose left some hard tasks for this day, letting some of the trash accumulate and the grass grow, and he even offered to do the laundry of the guys. One of the rules Aizawa Sensei had was that if someone was under house arrest, no one should help said someone with the chores and Midoriya planned to fully exploit it. If everything failed, he would use his ace in the sleeve and tell Yuraraka he had to talk with All Might. But turns out it didn't reach this point as Midoriya barely saw her more than the usual. Yuraraka was calm and radiant as always, but he expected her to be clinging at him. It has been a week since they had some intimacy. 
Well, strange as it was, Midoriya wasn't going to complain. He focused on his tasks and ended finishing them sooner than the planned. He used the extra time to train and at the end decided to sleep earlier tonight. Midoriya was sound asleep on his room but inside his mind he had a very vivid dream. In that dream, Midnight had tied him to a bed, shackling his wrists and ankles to the corners and his mouth was covered with tape. Midnight used her first hero costume, a lower half of a black leotard and leather straps barely covering her bosoms. She crawled on top of him like a cat and literally stripped his clothes off, tearing them until he was completely naked. The black-haired woman lowered herself and held his half-hard member in her hands, moving them gently until Midoriya was completely hard. Midnight then started to suck his member, taking his entire length inside her mouth. She looked up at him, and he could see a smile on her lips. She was almost sucking the life out of him, giving him a feeling so intense Midoriya thought he would black out. And then he woke up, slowly and slightly lost. Where was he again? Oh right, his room. Midoriya brought a hand to his head, brushing his hair. Man, it felt so real. Oh Deku-kun, having good dreams. Midoriya lowered his half-open eye and found none other than Ochako, looking at him with a happy face while sucking his member. Oh, oh, Ochako! He covered his mouth for saying her name so loud, then changed for whispering. What are you doing here? Slurp, slurp, late night dinner, she also whispered. The fact that she had a bright smile while holding his member was kinda unsettling. And as she said that she resumed on as ucking him. Midoriya had to fight back a moan, hissing as the brunette moved her head up and down. He tried to remain focused and stop here before it went too far. In his head, Midoriya still felt he should solve the things with Midnight first. I see, but why now? If you wanted you ha could have told me. Slurp, I was going to make a surprise slurp, but you looked so adorable sleeping slurp that I decided to give you some good dreams. So, slurp, did you like it? Well, how should he answer that? It wasn't as if the dream was bad, except maybe for the shackles and the tape, but Midoriya was sure Ochako wasn't expecting him to say he dreamed with midnight. It was nice, hot, very his vivid. Oh, good to know. She kept his ucking him with the happiest face and Midoriya kept trying to keep his head in the place. Slurp Deku Kun your member tastes so good, I can't have enough. Um, Ochako? You look ha different. Really? Slurp how so? You look happier than usual. Oh sorry, Deku-kun. I was feeling so lonely this week without you in the classroom. So I came here and just seeing you made me happy. Slurp your member, Deku-kun. It's so delicious hee hee, he hey. Ochako's eyes seemed out of focus as if her mind was distant. Her smile was wide and she was drooling. Ochako? Her eyes focused on him, but now they had an intense energy behind them, concealed by her bright smile. Ni Deku-kun, I know me and the girls are sharing you and all, and we're even getting more intimate with each other. Did you know we had second group three times this week? Oh, gee good to see you are getting along and... But you are mine, right? Sorry, what? Midoriya looked at her eyes again. Her stare was intense, unwavering, and completely focused on him. It felt like another person, someone with a strong desire. Midoriya swallowed dry. He should be careful with his answers from now on. You are mine, right Deku-kun? We are all in a harem, but in the end you are mine. Sure, I love you all and... No, no, not that silly. The smile vanished and gave place to a kind of menacing grin. Her brows furrowed a bit and her hands held on his shoulders with some strength. You are my Deku-kun, and I'm your Ochako. This is all that matters. The girls, they are our friends. Hatsum is a very nice girl. But we all know you are mine to keep, right? I, Zu, Ku. The green teen was shaking a bit. He knew Ochako could be very forward, but that was utterly scary. If he ever told her he had with Midnight and M.T. Lady, he could not imagine what would happen. Why, why, yeah, right. I'm all yours. So, why aren't you with your lovely girlfriends? Since you are under house arrest, you should be missing us a lot, 
but you avoided getting frisky with us. Why, Deku-kun? I, I, I didn't want to raise suspicions after the fight with Kaken. Huh, it doesn't make sense. Does he know about us? And no, but... Then, did something happen after the fight? His heart skipped a beat. No, nothing happened. She kept staring at him, almost burning his soul with her gaze. After a long minute, she slowly leaned and whispered in his ear. Her tone of voice was cheerful as usual, but at the same time, it was filled with a powerful sense of lust that made all the alarms on his head go off. Deku-kun, since you promised you would not f up with any random bitch, I'm going to trust you after all, that's what couples do. They trust each other. I just want you to know that no one loves you more than me. Ochako loves you so much, she would kill to be with you. Ochako just asks you to love her back and have sex with her now and then. Ochako loves Deku-kun's member. Does Deku-kun loves Ochako? Why, yes, more than anything. Yay, I feel so much happier now. Ochako sat on the bed with the previous bright smile, as if nothing happened at all. She leaned close to his face again, planted a quick peck on his lips, and got out of the bed, moving to the door. Good night, Deku-kun, sleep well. Also, I'm leaving these as a gift. Have fun, Ochako said as she spread her pink panties with a visible dark stain in the middle and tossed them to the boy lying on the bed. After that she quietly closed the door behind her, leaving Midoriya alone and on the verge of panicking internally as his body refused to react due to the state of terror he was. I, I am so dead. Oh, she said that, huh? Midnight sat on the couch of her room, sipping some of her coffee. Right now she was in the middle of advising Midoriya on a rather personal problem, as he told her. At first she was surprised he didn't look for the words of his mentor, but it was clear why he came to her. There was no way Tashinori could deal with this. Okay, so we have a needy girlfriend. Needy? I thought she would rip my soul out of my body. Well, maybe possessive describes it better with a tinge of madness. Sorry for being so blunt, Midnight Sensei, but how can you be so tranquil about it? I didn't have a single minute of sleep after that. Yes, I can see by your eye bags that are rivaling with Aizawa, it was Monday already. And don't worry, I understand you are distressed with this situation. Distressed, yeah. Hmm, did the others react in a similar way? No, but Ochako is much more forward than the other when it involves. Well me, I could expect something like that from Momo or maybe Mina. Sigh, that's why we should not have. Oh, stop right there, young man, don't put the blame on me. From what you said, they don't know nothing, so don't think this is some kind of jealous attack. I, I'm not saying that. I don't know, it looks like Ochako has a mind-reading quirk that only works on me. That's not it. She's just being too honest about her feelings. So, what should I do? There are two solutions that I would suggest. The easier one, have her senseless. Excuse me, what? Give her what she wants. If she needs your member so bad, give it to her non-stop and she won't be complaining or acting up. What about the other option? Is it less, straightforward by any means? The second option, put the girl on a damn leash. His face told Midnight Midoriya didn't get it. At all. Sai, since she doesn't know when to stop, you have to draw the line, establish a limit. And how do I do that? My current limit is when I black out. Though it's almost cute that you go so far for your girlfriends, you should build up more stamina. I can help you with that about controlling your hormone-driven harem, I have an idea. Huh? What do you mean, sensei? I'm going to have a little talk with them, from woman to girl. I was planning to do it anyway. Are you sure this will work? Shouldn't I be the one talking? I'll just soften them up for you. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll listen to me. Okay, thank you, Midnight Sensei. Don't mention it. This advising thing is actually really nice. Now go, you have the hero training. Oh, and expect to see a small surprise. Midoriya left her room and rushed to the lockers. When he rejoined his classmates, already changed and heading to Ground Gamma, the green teen couldn't help but laugh nervously at the surprise the plus-18 hero mentioned. Small surprise? Really? 
Very well, today we have a special guest helping with your training. The purpose is to improve how you deal with unbalanced situations such as a huge difference between your size and the size of the opponent Aizawa calmly said and motioned to the said guest as she carefully sat on top of a two-store building. Hello to all of you brats, let's go plus ultra, MT, lady said as she raised a fist in the air. The students of one a sweat dropped and silently agreed they were done for this time, except for the grape head midget. Minta was beaming with happiness. Now for the rules. Your objective is to successfully immobilize the villain for at least 10 seconds. You can use any means you can think of, but keep in mind that when you deal with a giant opponent, there's a lot of collateral damage. If the city gets destroyed to a certain point, I'll stop the exercise and you all will have quirk strengthening for the rest of the week. EA, the class said in unison. That's the same as saying we'll be tortured for the rest of the week, Ashido cried. I don't want to go through the summer camp all over again, Siro said. While the other students voiced their worries, Midoriya kept looking at the giant woman in front of them, and he asked himself if this was part of Midnight's plan, or if there was another reason behind this. And as he thought with himself, MT, Lady quickly sent him a wink. Everyone could see her, but he knew it was for him. You can get ready to the exercise or keep complaining if you want to. I can even start the quirk strengthening right now since now. I don't care, Aizawa said as he calmly walked off to the monitoring room, eliciting desperate and anxious reactions from his students. Calm down, guys. If we work together, I'm sure we can make it. Midoriya is right. As heroes in training, we should work on our teamwork and learn to rely on each other. Ida was about to start a speech, but the horn sounded off, starting the exercise. M.T. Lady stood in the middle of the large street and cracked her knuckles, faking an angry villain face. All right, you tiny bugs, time to show you who's boss around. A huge iceberg formed in an instant, enveloping her giant body and only leaving her face uncovered. Her eyes were wide open with surprise and the sudden change of temperature. The students of Wana all stood in a circle around Todoroki, looking stunned at the icy hot teen. Todoroki, with his right side covered in ice, had his tranquil expression as always. Sorry for the bluntness and lack of teamwork, but I guess this solves the problem quite well. Everyone agreed with him. Todoroki really was an impressive person. Not only he single-handed immobilized MT lady, but he also did it with the minimum of damage to the buildings. But then they heard a laugh coming from the giant woman locked into a frost prison. Ha 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 ha, good move, totally got me unprepared. But you have to consider other factors besides the difference in size when dealing with villains like me. For example, the amount of heat I produce. Todoroki's eyes widened in shock as he saw the ice melting faster than it should. Inside the iceberg MT, Lady already had a little space to move around, and with that she started to shake her body, then forced her way out of the ice, blasting the upper half with her arms. Tiny ice rocks rained over the place while she punched the lower part of the team ice, finally getting free. Yu shuddered a bit and rubbed her arms. Well, you almost made it. Nine seconds, right Aizawa? You are right. Try again, you all, and this time consider the teamwork. The voice of their homeroom teacher sounded on the speakers. Empty, Lady had a wicked smile on her face while she stared at the shocked students on the street. So, where were we again? Oh yeah, I'm going to crush some bugs, nah ha 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 The class ran away as M.T. Lady brought her foot down, stomping the street and making a small crater. She faked a villain laugh as she pursued the group of screaming and desperate teen through the streets. It was like a cat chasing mouses inside a labyrinth, and you couldn't be having more fun, not to mention she was getting paid for it. With the heroes in training, in midst of the commotion, Midoriya tried to form a plan while Ida calmed down the rest of the class. The fact that Todoroki failed to contain MT, Lady surprised everyone, and if that huge iceberg didn't stop her, how would they do it? The first thing that crossed Midoriya's mind was that Todoroki used this move from the start, so he ran closer to the icy hot team. Todoroki-kun, you created a lot of ice, you must be feeling tired. Not exactly, 
but I won't be able to replicate that. My right side almost froze back there. Then we need to think of something else. Do you have a plan? Not yet. To be honest, I don't know how can we contain MT. Lady, it's totally different from the capture tape exercises. We need to keep her still for 10 seconds, right? Yayurazu approached the two. What if we stun her or something? Oh, I could try it. My indiscriminate discharge should do the trick without hurting her too much. Kaminari was near and overheard the talk. I don't think it would work the same way with her. Just think about how she managed to break free of my ice. Then what should we do? The blonde whined. Maybe we can make one of her limbs go numb like a stun gun. Yamomo suggested. We need to keep her immobilized, not debilitated. No, Todoroki-kun. Actually, this is a good idea Midoriya started. By the way his eyes focused he was forming a plan. Coming to think of it, none of us has an ability to contain her effectively besides Todoroki-kun, but even that didn't work. Maybe if we do the right combination, we can stop MT. Lady without causing much damage. Oi, are you talking about me over there? Mahahahaha. You just made a tiny leap to her at least, and landed dangerously close to the group of teens, even sending some of them flying a few meters ahead. She wasn't going to just let them form a plan, but at the same time, she was curious about what trick Midoriya would pull out. Midoriya, we are an easy target if we keep running around together. Did you think of something to stop her? Ida approached the green-haired teen. Not completely, but you are right. We need to scatter. Ida Kun, divide the class into smaller groups. Once we form a plan, we will tell everyone Yayurazu said as she handed him some walkie-talkies she just created. Ida nodded and ran away, coordinating the class to divide into groups and handing them the talkies. They split into small teams and went to different directions, forcing MT, Lady to choose someone to follow. At some point she lost track of them and started to look around, peeking at the buildings and alleys. Hey, come out, come out, you can't hide forever. Meanwhile, Midoriya, Yayurazu, Todoroki, and Kaminari hid inside a store. They talked with the rest of the class through the talkie. Okay, everyone, I think I have a plan. Since we can't rely on just one person to take her down, we'll need to work together and... Shut up, Deku. Don't tell me what to do. Bro, just give me that. We are listening, Midoriya Kirishima said as the voice of Bakugo sounded in the background. Well, the plan is quite simple, we have to make MT, Lady Fall. Given her size, this is the only way we can hope to immobilize her. But how are we going to do that? Ashido asked. If we do it right, we can take her off balance enough to let gravity do the hard work. What do you have in mind? A giant banana peel, Siro joked. In fact, I was thinking of using your tape, Siro san Really? My tape isn't that strong. It doesn't have to be. We just need it to hold her for five seconds. Also, Tokoyami kun Maitakun Ashido san you all will have the same task. Then what should we do? Also, only Ashido is with me. First, we have to distract her. I was thinking that Aoyama, Hagakure, and Kaken would be the best options. Also, Gyro and Koda could help too. Taking out MT, Lady's sight for a brief moment or making her dizzy will be important to the plan. How many time I have to say? Don't tell me what. Okay, teen distraction is a go. Aoyama-kun, Kaioka-chan, Koda-kun, we should see a place to meet later. Hagakure just covered Bakugo's mouth as Kirishima held the talkie to her. Second step, bind her legs. That's where you enter, Siro-kun, Takoyami-kun. You too, Maita-kun. I see. We are going to make her trip. Exactly, Takoyami-kun. Oh, I can make the floor slippery. This way she won't get up too soon, Ashido suggested. Good thinking. The next step is to throw her off balance, so we'll need a lot of raw strength. Sato Shoji, I'm counting on you. Me, Kirishima-kun and Ajiro-kun will act as cannonballs. Kaminari will debilitate her too, and I think this will be enough to make her trip. And what about the rest of us, Deku-kun? The fourth step is actually to restrain her movements. Todoroki will use his ice in a smaller scale and Yamomo will create cables so can immobilize her. 
Ida and Suyu, since you are pretty fast and agile, you'll be playing a major role here. Keep in mind that this is just a guess and I'm not sure about the exact outcome. As she said, we have to discard the common sense since we are dealing with a huge difference in size. Don't worry, Deku-kun. I know this plan will work. I agree with you, Araka. You always show a great understanding of the situation, Midoriya. Well, so let's move then. I bet she won't keep quiet like this for long. Just as Midoriya said that, outside on the streets, you stopped peeking at the small windows and started to shout. Oi, you tiny bugs, show yourselves already or else I'll level this place, just kidding I'll break everything anyway, and just like that MT. Lady landed a kick on the buildings, bringing them to huge piles of debris. Gao, I wish I had an atomic breath quirk too. Yu was pretty much playing while destroying the city replica, much to Aizawa's annoyance. He told her she didn't have to hold back on the city, but these buildings had a cost to be rebuilt. There was a limit to Cementos' goodwill, you know. While the giant blonde was at her fake burst of anger, a beam of light crossed her sight, pretty close to her face, actually. She looked around and found none other than Aoyama on top of a building. He winked at her, and holding a weird pose, shot his laser up in the sky. It was like one of those electric lights you put to kill bugs, but much larger. Huh? What do you think you are doing, Shiny? I am a distraction. The next second MT. Lady got surrounded by a flock of many birds flying around her head. They didn't harm her as if they could, but it was pretty annoying. She carefully waved them off with her hands, then she heard someone call her. Hey, you there, the old lady. Who are you calling old, you huh? Where? When she noticed the set of floating clothes, it was too late. Light refraction. You got blinded by a bright flash of light, making her vision get blurry. Now, Kaioka-chan, Bakugo-kun. As Hagakure fell, being held by Shoji, Sato launched Gyro up at the height of MT, Lady's head, while Bakugo rocketed to the other side. Heartbeat fuzz? Die. The loud boom from the amplifiers and the blast on the other side added up to Yu's confused state, giving her a dizzy head and a ringing on her ears. Damn, sneaky brats. She took a step back and then she felt something soft. On the street, Minta tossed dozens of his purple balls, backing a large purple spot and empty. Lady just stepped on it. As Yu noticed she got stuck, she leaned on her other leg to break free. But at that moment, Kaminari jumped in and used his max output. The giant woman felt the electricity coursing through her leg until it felt dormant, while Kaminari walked aimlessly with his brain short-circuited. She tried to shift her weight, but then Siro launched himself from a building, using his tape to tie her around the ankles. Don't think this will hold me. I know it won't. Takoyami. From a dark alley, dark shadow sprouted, using his claw wings to strengthen the tape holding on her ankles. And before she could react to the bird-headed teen, she felt a strong force against her elbows. From the street Sato, filled to the brim with sugar, launched Kirishima on his hardened form, just like a cannonball. By his side, Shoji acted as a target system, since the muscular teen could not focus due to the side effect of his quirk. Ojiro was next, and then Midoriya, but Bakugo came flying and body slammed into MT. Lady 2. Out of the way, Deku. You little brats. They managed to throw her off balance. The giant woman slowly leaned back, with her ankles still restrained, until gravity acted upon her body, making you meet the floor with her backs. She quickly tried to get up, but her hands slipped. Meanwhile, Ashido beamed after seeing her plan working. At that moment, Ida sped around her with a long cable while Tsuyu and Yuraraka jumped over MT. Lady with more cables. Yeyurazu created more cables and handed them to her classmates while Todoroki used his ice to lock larger parts. Though they managed to bring her down, Yu was far from done. I didn't lose yet. She thrashed around, breaking some of the ice and loosening the cables. At this point, everyone got there and found a part to hold. Takoyami used Dark Shadow to hold one of her wrists and Sato was holding five cables alone. The teens used their maximum strength to keep the giant down for the necessary time. 
Hold her, guys, just a little longer, Kirishima shouted. Three, two, one. The horn sounded, which meant the exercise was over. They did it. Class 1A got free of the quirk strengthening week. Most of the students let themselves fall on the floor, relieved for avoiding an entire week of Spartan training. Ahem. Congratulations for you all. Now that the exercise is over, can someone please get me off this slime, tape, and cables? By the time you got free, Aizawa made his way to the teens. He was pretty surprised that his students were so tranquil about the results of the exercise. Oi, you all seem to have forgotten that the exercise had two conditions. One was to immobilize MT, lady, a feat that I congratulate you for achieving. The second condition, the amount of destruction had to be minimal eyes were wide open in realization. And to be honest, she really got far here beads of sweat started to form, and some of the teens even shock in fear and anticipation. Seriously, next time I think I'll use the zero point anyways. Well, it was for a tiny bit, but you passed. Keep in mind that this was a simulation. In a real situation you would have civilians and probably much less help. Besides, the enemy won't just stand still while you form a plan. That said, good teamwork, you all. Class 1A released a collective sigh. They avoided danger by a tiny bit. As the teacher left the scene, everyone decided to relax a bit as they headed back to the locker rooms, chatting with each other and commenting on the task they just finished. Midoriya walked more isolated from his friends. The fact that his plan worked out was pretty surprising for him. Sure, everyone worked together, which was the reason why they succeeded. Even Kekin helped though he kept swearing and shouting. But still, it was a plan he came up with, and everyone trusted on his judgment. The sensation was kinda overwhelming, having such a responsibility on your shoulders. Midoriya realized that being the number one also meant that people would be relying on him to this type of thing, guiding the others through dire situations. He understood a little better how much the society as a whole depended on all might, and he would eventually fill this role, which made him pretty anxious. While the green team dwelled on his thoughts, a certain blonde spotted him and decided to say hello. You sneaked behind him, looking around to see if anyone was watching them. Luckily for her, the other kids were far enough, so she made her move and quickly swiped the teen up in her arms, taking him to an alley. On the shadowy alley, you put Midoriya against the wall, keeping him in place by putting both hands on the wall at his sides. M.M.T. Lady? Midoriya was clearly surprised by the sudden move. His captor looked at him from above with an intense gaze which only made him more nervous, but then the stare turned into a bright smile and he found himself wrapped into her arms. You hugged him tight, lifting the teen from the ground and making sure to press him as close as she could to her body. Hi Midoriya, good to see you. That plan your class pulled out, you were the one to make it right? I'm so proud of you. Who's a beautiful young genius? Auntie, lady, let go, someone can see us. His voice sounded slightly muffled because his face was slightly pressed against her chest, much to his embarrassment. The woman looked down at him and spotted the red tinge on his cheeks, so she decided to tease him a bit, just for the fun of it. Huh? Midoriya, are you embarrassed by being seen with me? That'd be well when we are so see close, but don't you like to be this close to me? Or maybe you want to get even closer. She put him on the floor and proceeded to bury his face on her bosom, enjoying the panicked reaction she earned from him. Here, come to the warm embrace of your lovely temporary teacher. T. Temporary teacher. Yep, Nimiri helped me a bit so now you are going to see me around more often, though only in combat lessons. I can't imagine myself inside a class with lots of annoying teens. Not that think you are annoying. Midoriya is special. I, I am? Yes, you are very special. After all, my first time was with you. She leaned close to his ear and whispered the last part, making Midoriya even redder. M.T. Lady Sensei, we should not tea talk about these things. Ni, nee, you can call me you when we are alone like this. Midoriya, I have been feeling so lonely lately. Are really? I thought you were very popular. I didn't think you would have difficulty to find someone to go out and... 
No, no, I'm not talking about this. I have been missing you. I, I wonder why. Midoriya did his best to focus on anything else but the woman in front of him. Yu pressed him against the wall again, this time much closer to his body. Her right knee lifted up a bit, rubbing between his legs. Midoriya was already breathing heavy and sweating nervously. Midoriya, how about I give you a special class? I promise it will be fun. I, I thank the offer, but I have to pass. Oh, why? Is it because of your little girlfriends? Shock filled his face. You know about it? Nimuri told me some things. You are actually a really naughty boy, aren't you? Sensei Erm Yu san, I know something happened between us before, but it can't happen again. I, I made a promise to them. Oh, but Midoriya, we have to. It was so so. So good to have you. She was dangerously close now pressing her ample bosom against his chest. One of her hands caressed his cheeks while the other wandered down and ended groping his butt. B, but I was asleep, I can't even remember it. Which is why I want to do it again. If you were so awesome while sleeping, I can't wait to see you fully awake also. I want you to remember of me too. You leaned in and nibbled at the tip of his ear, moaning low while her hands traced his shaking body. I feel like I could take you here and now. We should really not, if someone would definitely see us. She let out a light laugh at the desperate manners of the teen. You let go of him and just stood in front of Midoriya, watching as he steadied his breath. Mimuri was right, you are funny to tease. Please don't say it. Well, I must go now. Be careful from now on, Midoriya. Sooner or later, I will have you on my bed. Midoriya swallowed dry as he watched the blonde walk off, taunting him with a sway of her hips that she made on purpose. Now he had to deal with M.T., Lady Two. Oh man, my life. No, wait, scratch that. There's enough of it on my life already. Can it get any better than now? And yes, yes it can. Midoriya returned to the dorms and quickly moved to his room, carrying some notes he borrowed from Ida and started to see what he had lost during the house arrest. He kept buried on the books and notes until dinner. He quickly ate his food, put his plate on the sink and headed back to his room, eager to compensate the lost time. He even skipped training today to take on the urgent matter, but then something clicked on his mind. He didn't see any of the girls during dinner. In fact, he expected at least one of them to come to show up during the afternoon, but they never came. Well, I'm sure someone will call me later, probably Momo. At least I got to work on the subjects I lost. Sigh, I wish I could deal with the girls just as easy. Midoriya started to think about his situation with his harem, Midnight, and now M.T., Lady. It was starting to get out of his control. Truth be told, Midoriya never had much control over what was happening. Midnight was right, he should be more proactive and draw a line. He loved them all but there had to be a limit on certain things. That lead him to his previous talk with the plus 18 hero. She said she would talk with the girls, but she didn't exactly say what she would talk about. Also, it was just to soften up, so he would end talking with them, eventually. While he worried about these complicated matters, his phone vibrated on his desk. Midoriya picked it up and looked at the screen, finding a message from an unknown number. Room 132, close to the development studio. Be there in ten minutes. Ni, ni Miri. It was a message from midnight. After that, he received another one, a picture. He opened it and saw a selfie of said woman, laying on a bed and only using the milky thin fabric of her costume, her mask and dark blue stockings. The legend of the image said don't make me wait three. He stared at the screen of his phone for some moments, first because midnight looked stunning from any angle, and after that he worried about what awaited him. Please just be a joke, the green-haired teen said to no one and then got out of his room, heading to the pointed location. Midoriya made sure to draw the least of attention possible. At this point, any question could be compromising. He moved quickly through the Alliance dorms, reaching the building where the development studio was. Many times he took this path, going to see Mei while she worked on her babies, but that was back then. Now he had a completely different objective. 
not that he was eager to see Midnight since he knew what she wanted. That said, Midoriya felt anxious. He tried to deny it, but he had some expectations rather his body had. Ninuri sure left a strong impression on him. Sigh, when did I pass to the first name basis? He stood in front of the door, large just like the one from the development studio. Midoriya pressed the button on the side and the door opened, giving him access to the dark room. The light of the hallway didn't allow him to see much further inside the room so Midoriya decided to just end with this already and entered the room. Once inside the door closed behind him, bright white lights came on and he felt a pair of arms wrap around his body. By the soft sensation pressing against his back, Midoriya guessed who was this unidentified person. Midnight Sensei, you called me here for something? Hello to you too, Midoriya. Yes, there's something I wanted to show you. Show me? What? What could it be? Hey, hey, don't be so nervous. No need to rush things. Since we are here, why don't we have some fun? Midnight Sensei, I... Ni. Mu. Rai. We are pretty intimate already, don't you think? Ni. Nimiri-san. I think we should skip that part. Nimiri then started to gently bite his ears and suck at the base of his neck, while her skilled hands traced his body down to between his legs. Midoriya stiffened at her touch, trying to at least pretend he wasn't liking it. So, how was your day? Did you like the surprise I mentioned earlier? Why, yeah, a little surprise. Why did you become a temporary teacher anyway? Why do you think? Because of you. What are you ha talking about? She will deny it, but she absolutely loved her first time with you. More than that, I think she's actually developing a crush. Soon enough this will turn into true love, I'm almost certain. So, what do you think of your newest addition? I didn't add no one huff. You sure you want to dismiss you? Give her some time and she'll surprise you, trust me. That's not the point, ha, huh? I can't do this. Oh, always so loyal. Anyway, did you do something about your needy girls already? I didn't have pant much time. Hmm, I thought so. Guess what? I have another surprise for you. Why am I huff so nervous about it? Relax, you'll love it. They will too. They? Nimiri let go of him and lead Midoriya to the bed at the center of the room. It was large, really large, and was covered in white blankets and bedsheets. Near the bed, two sofas colored in light gray. Midoriya looked at it even though he feared the answer he had to ask. Nimiri, what are those for? He said pointing to the furniture. You don't want to do it on the floor, do you? Do what, exactly? I love it when you play dumb and get all nervous, okay? Sit there for a moment, it'll be really quick. You may come out now. Midoriya was glad he sat on the bed or else he would fall on the floor. Another door on the other side of the room opened and, one by one, the girls from his harem came out, wearing nothing but underwear and looking at the floor to hide the embarrassed and red faces. His eyes widened at the scene taking place in front of him. So, Ninuri told them what happened. That's why he didn't see any of them today. What would happen now? While he felt being filled with terror, Midoriya sought for Nimiri, hoping to have some answers, and what he found was a sincere smile crossing her lips. Now, what's up with these faces? Come on, show some energy. Don't you think your precious boyfriend deserves a better sight? Midoriya flinched as all the eyes lifted up and turned to him. There would be another session of explanations and apologies that if he didn't get killed. He expected furious looks, but they looked really embarrassed, glancing at him then averting their eyes, holding on the arms and shifting in place nervously. Just what was happening? Nimiri did, did you do something? Who? Me? I just had a talk with them like I said I would, from woman to girl, right ladies? Midoriya watched as they nodded vigorously. It was like they were scared of her. Are you sure you just talked with them? Of course. My mouth didn't stop working. Isn't it true, Ochako-chan? Why, yes, her voice sounded shaky and timid. Ochako was clearly nervous with Nimiri's presence. Now, Midoriya, why don't you appreciate your girls a little bit? They chose these clothes just for you, you know. Are, really? Sure. 
Here you all, come closer and show yourselves for him. The girls quickly moved, standing around the bed while Nimiri made Midoriya sit on her lap on the bed. Hi, Deku-kun. Oh, Ochako. I, well, we chose these ones when we, when we went to the shopping trip with Mei. Did, did you like them? She slowly made a pose, lifting her right arm and putting her hand behind the head, while the other rested on her waist. The other girls followed suit and made similar poses. Come on, Midoriya, say how beautiful and sexy your girlfriends look. Midoriya stared at each of the girls. There was no denying it was quite the view. Each one of them looked stunning, easily making a bulge appear on his pants. There was Momo's red lace bra that showed her bosoms a lot, and the black stockings she was wearing were really tight around her thighs. Hatsune's white bra seemed to make her chest look even bigger. Mina looked very provocative and the purple bra and panties combined with her skin. Though she was invisible, Toru looked really sexy with this dark blue triangular-shaped bra and string panties. His imagination took care of the filling the blank spaces. Tsuyu's body curves were highlighted by her green and black set. Ochako, as always, looked stunning for him, the perfect balance between cute and sexy with this like pink bra cupping her round bosoms. Kayoka black set contrasted with her light skin and her subtle curves looked even more attractive. By now Midoriya had been staring for some time, and he felt his face heating up. Not only that, something was off. He felt some difficulty to breathe. Then he brought a hand to his nose, and when he looked at it, he saw a small red stain. Holy shit, we actually gave him a nosebleed Mina voiced, as surprised as Midoriya. The comment brought the boy back to reality, and upon realizing the situation he was, he jumped to the part where he starts to apologize. Girls, I know what it looks like, but I can explain and... Don't even try, I told them about our little adventure, Ninuri cut him mid-sentence. Midoriya hung his head in defeat, getting ready to scolds and maybe physical aggression. Girls, why don't you show your boyfriend what did we learn today? Huh? Learned? He looked at the woman with a confused face. After classes ended, I called your harem to have a talk about some topics. After that, we had some special classes. It was like when Ochako captured us, Kayoka said. Please, Kayoka-chan, what I did pales in comparison. I agree, Momo added. So, what are you waiting for? Nimuri asked them. Ochako-chan, do you mind? Toru suggested. Well, I'm the first one, right? Nimuri held Midoriya in place when she felt him tense up. He would try to run away this time, so she decided to use a tiny bit of her quirk covering his mouth and nose with her hand. The amount of her scent was so small it only made him get more relaxed. There, there, relax, Midoriya. You'll be surprised with what they learned. As she said that, Ochako crawled on the bed and got in front of him. Still kinda unsure, she removed his pants and underwear, exposing his hard member. She exchanged a glance with Nimiri, as if asking for permission, and then proceeded to shove his member inside her mouth. She stroked the base of his length with a hand while she sucked and licked the rest, changing her pace now and then. From the experience they had together, Izuku knew she got a lot better. In no time he felt like he would explode. It was like when Nimiri azucked him and, wait. On Nimiri did you ha? Did you tea train them to do this? Shit. Oh ho, did you notice? So the difference is pretty obvious. See, I told you he would love it, she said as she looked to the group of embarrassed girls. They kept watching as Ochako sucked the life out of Izuku, earning hisses and moans from him. Ochako slowly got more focused on what she was doing, letting her worries fade away as she gave pleasure to the love of her life. As the brunette started to moan, the others also started to get in the mood feeling a hot sensation building up on their lower regions. The dark-haired woman invited the others to join in, which they gladly accepted, crawling on the bed and finding a spot on top of Midoriya, or at least on his sides. But before they could start anything, Nimuri pushed Ochako back. Okay, we don't need to go too far on this. We have other plans for now, right? The girls nodded with determined looks, while Midoriya looked lost at what was happening. 
Izuku honey, after these special classes, I decided that you also had to receive a special training, so that's what we are gonna do now. Wait, wait, with everyone? And you'll be here too? Yes, and you will soon join us. Get ready for the best night of your life so far Nimiri then locked Izuku into a deep kiss, sucking his tongue and exploring his mouth, until he felt the need to breathe. Letting go of him, she gently pushed him to Ochako, who quickly wrapped her arms around him and locked him into a kiss of her own. Like we did before, Ochako. Right. Ochako stood on top of him and quickly removed her bra and panties, rocking her hips back and forth on his lap. The green-haired teen was still confused about the things taking place. Her eyes lit up with a known flame. Whenever she got that look, whenever any of them got that look, Izuku was sure they were serious. So, Ochako lifted herself up a bit and hovered above his shaft, proceeding to wrap his member with her bosoms. She moved them up and down while she kissed and licked the tip, making Izuku lose himself a little. Damn. They're so soft, I need to focus, but she's making this impossible. Oh, Ochako, I messed up, I... Say ch 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 don't talk, just... Enjoy it. I'm not angry. What? Ah. I could never be angry with you, Izuku. I love you so much I want to make you the happiest person in the world, so I'll give my best. I'll give you my everything. Aw, isn't it touching? Come on, ladies, Ochako here is doing all the work, Nimiri teased the other girls. At this instant, they all focused on giving Izuku any four of pleasure they could imagine. Mei pushed Ochako a bit to the side and also used her bosoms to envelop his member, while the two of them kicked him up and down. Toru managed to find space between them and started to s uck on his balls. Suyu and Mina got hold of his hands sucked his fingers in an erotic manner, while Momo and Kayoka alternated between kissing him and sucking on his neck and collarbones. Izuku felt many tender and gentle hands running over his skin, only adding up to the huge amount of pleasure he was feeling. The sensation was overwhelming as practically all his senses were overloaded with different stimulus. One for all activated much faster than usual, a clear sign that he was near his limit, but before he could release his seed, everyone stopped and Momo locked him into a deep kiss, holding him like that until his lungs ached for air. Gasping for air, Izuku felt the surge of energy fade away. He looked at his harem, currently blushing madly and staring at him with desire, but looking like they were waiting for something. Between sharp breaths, his head lifted up a bit, guided by the gentle hands of Nimiri. He found a smile on her face as she stared at him. So, did you like it? By the shade of red on your face, I bet you did. I loved it. But Nimiri, what I did with you, I... Miss HHH, you heard the girl. No talking, unless you call for them while you effuck. Now, here's the deal, honey. Based on what I saw last time, I think I have an idea to give you a little boost. Until you can sustain that sparkling form on your own, you won't be able to climax. What? How can this be of any help? Though Izuku was truly concerned about the reason behind this bold decision, he also didn't like the implication that he would pile up the tension again. I hope that this level of stress will force you to do it. Now, you may continue, ladies. Izuku didn't have time to protest as he quickly was silenced by Kayoka. They returned to do what they were doing before, with so much passion, it looked like they had to do it in order to live. The sensation of having his member involved in soft and warm jugs, the sucking, the kisses, the low moaning coming from them, and the heat of so many bodies making contact with his own, everything around him was meant to make Izuku lose his head. And yet, when he was about to climax, they stopped and Kayoka was the next one to try and steal the air from his lungs. It was kinda desperating, but exhilarating at the same time. Pa, could you please stop it? Sorry, muscles, it's for the best. Don't give me that oh shit. His eye widened in surprise as he felt someone sucking the life out of him. Said someone was Toru, and even though he could not see her, she was deep-throating him and boy, she knew what she was doing. Meanwhile, Ochako changed places, and she started to s uck his balls while Momo and Mei sat on his abs in front of each other and rubbing their groins together, rocking back and forth on top of the green-haired team. 
Kayoka hovered above him, practically shoving her on his face. Getting what she wanted, Izuku started to like her, while the slender girl got caressed by the skilled hands of the pro hero. At the same time, Tsuyu guided one of his hands to her bosoms and Mina brought the other to between her legs. Mimuri got close to his ears, whispering then biting him. How long do you think you can handle all these girls, or maybe I should put on more pressure on you? As she said that, the woman wrapped an arm around his neck and started to squeeze it a bit, gradually increasing her strength. Izuku reached with his hands to remove her hold, but the effect of Midnight's quirk was still working, not to mention the group of girls taking over his body. He felt his lungs aching for air while his face was still buried between Kayoka's legs. His vision was getting blurry and he started to panic, yet in the middle of this confusion he felt really good due to his harem giving him so much attention. His brain short-circuited for a second as for a brief moment he liked the sensation of being choked. After that quick lapse and almost losing consciousness, his eyes shot wide open and Izuku activated his quirk, suppressing the effect of Nimiri's scent. The girls stopped again as they felt him tense up and Nimiri let go of his neck, allowing the glowing teen to breathe. Izuku gasped and coughed a bit, letting himself fall back on Nimiri's lap while he steadied his heartbeat. These girls, they almost got him killed. He knew this wasn't the case, but he felt like it. And what was worse, for a brief moment he actually thought it would be a nice way to leave this world. Gasp, let's not, pant do that, huff ever again. Okay, but I was right. Look. Midnight pointed to him, and then he noticed. Izuku was using full cowl, and he wasn't even focusing on doing it. In reality, the way he felt was different like laking the boost of strength and muscular tension he usually felt when using full cowl. Right now he felt a great increase in energy like he could run 10 kilometers at full speed without getting tired. Or, putting it on another use, he felt like he could go through the entire night with these girls without blacking out. Wow, I feel full of energy. Yay, the plan is success. Ni Midoriya, are you sure you are not a hidden M-type? Mimiri poked at his cheeks, making the boy blush madly. Oh, oh, of course not, I felt desperate. My, my, don't be so serious, it isn't like we would let you die. Now that you have a new boost to keep you going, what about we test it out? Nimiri said as she removed his shirt and tossed it somewhere. Bras and panties of many colors and formats flew after. All of them held eyes full of desire focused on his figure. Suddenly, the door slid open, startling the green-haired teen. The sound of a known voice only managed to calm him down a bit. Hey, did I miss something? About time you showed up, you. We were going to start without you. The blonde woman approached the bed, removing her uniform and underwear while she walked. Don't be so mean, Nimiri. I want to have my favorite emerald boy too, already naked. You got on the bed and gave a quick peck on the cheeks of the terrified teen. Okay, he felt like he could go through the entire night, but he wasn't sure of that. And let's not forget that midnight was here, and now M.T. Lady 2? How was he supposed to please all these ladies? I'll show you how, Nimiri said. Oops, Izuku was thinking loud again. Ochako, care to do the honors? As she said that, the brunette quickly got on top of him and lowered herself on his hard member. The smile on her lips widened as she felt Izuku parting her inner regions. Ochako started to bounce up and down, slamming her crotch against his. The way she moved, her intensity, the way her walls wrapped around his length, everything felt different better. She kept looking at him with those eyes full of lust as she licked her lips seductively and moaned loud. Ochako moaned loud and moved her hips at a fast pace, holding on Izuku as her life depended on him. Meanwhile, around the bed, the girls were already fingering themselves of licking each other. Just looking at the duo turned them on to that point. Izuku was lost in his pleasure. It was much closer to what he experienced with Nimiri than anything else. Wait, was it okay to compare this kind of thing? He didn't give that much attention though as he focused on the girl he was currently having. Nimiri guided his hands to hold on Ochako's hips, pressing them down while she moved. Here honey, match your pace with hers. 
Following what the pro hero said, Izuku moved his hips together with Ochako, pushing her down with increasing strength and speed. His hands ran over her ass and squeezed it while she moaned louder and louder. Her nails dug into his shoulders, making tiny marks, but he didn't care a single bit. The expression adorning her face, he loved it. It was pure as she focused on him and him only, and at the same time seductive and full of lust. Pleasure was all over the place, from her deep red blush to her eyes almost rolling to the back of her head and her tongue slightly sticking out her agape mouth. Izuku absolutely loved to hear her call his name, moan for him. He was making her do these noises, he was the source of all these reactions, and he loved it. Ochako had her blast and glued her crotch against his as much as she could. She breathed heavily while she stared at the teen under her, then suddenly Izuku moved, knocking her on the bed. Now he was on top, hovering above her, staring at her body with eyes of a predator. From behind them, Nimiri guided Izuku to lift Ochako's hips a bit, spreading her legs and bending them almost over her head. This way, honey, you can reach much deeper. Go there and break her. Without a second thought, Izuku entered her again and went on a fast pace, slamming his body against hers relentlessly. Her eyes widened in surprise with the sudden change of pace, but it was more than welcome to the brunette. Ah ah ah, so deep yes, have me Izuku, B break me in two oo. Izuku was completely focused on her, on giving her all he had. Her expression, her voice making those lewd sounds, the way her boobs and her whole body moved as he thrust in her, it was enticing. You love it, don't you? You love to be by me. I love to have you too, Ochako, so take it. Take the member you love so much. Oh, yes, I want your member, Izuku. Ah, so big, it's getting even bigger inside me. More, I want more, ah, I need more. See came for me, Izuku. Give me your hot seed. Ah, I, I gonna came again, ah, ah, Izuku. Ochako had another blast, releasing a flush of her juices that mixed with the huge load Izuku let out, so much that it started to pour from her inwards. It's so much, I've never felt, so good before, her voice was kinda wavy, and she was shaking a bit. It was your first double blast, and be ready because it won't be the last, Nimiri said, as she pressed her chest against Izuku's backs and reached for his member, holding it on her hands. Right, Midoriya? I'll huff give my best pant. That's how you talk. So, who is next? Mina quickly let go of Mei, who she was currently in a 69, and jumped on the green-haired teen, practically eating him alive while she kissed him. Izu returned with the same intensity and then gave a quite strong slap on her butt cheeks, earning a yelp from the pink-skinned girl. Rawl, someone is wild tonight. You want me to tune it down? Look at my part and tell me if I want. Shouldn't I look at your eyes? Nah, now take me muscles. Before they could kiss again, Mina was pulled and spun around, ending leaning on her hands and knees. Her cheeks then got cupped by a hand, and she found the gaze of Nimiri. Oh, so we have a brave girl. Let's see how far you go with this boldness. She barely finished, Izuku gave her another slap, making a loud sound. Mina winced a bit but started to giggle as he kept hitting her from behind. When she looked back at him, she got surprised. Izuku was grinning. He was actually grinning as he slapped her again and again and held her ass with these strong hands of him. H.A., hey, you seem to be having a good time back there. Yes, I'm. What? You don't want me to spank your pink round ass? He said that as his hands made circles over her butt cheeks, slightly purple from the spanking. Who said that? I just never saw you like that. You are really liking it. What's not to like? I love to hit your pink ass, Mina. Like this. Izuku hit her with a little more strength. Oh, that hurt again. Izuku hit her two or three times more, then landed a hand on her hips and guided his member to her entrance, rubbing the tip on her wet slit. Before making his move, Izuku glanced at Mimiri, who pulled you closer. Mina, look ahead just a bit. Huh? What for MMFF? As the girl turned around, Mimiri grabbed her by the hair and pushed her head down, burying her face between Yu's legs. The blonde held her in place and gave Izuku a wink, signaling for him that he could go on. 
He didn't spend time and entered her quite roughly, just like Mina liked. Her eyes widened as she felt his huge member stretching her walls. Ah, muscles, it's so big it's going so deep inside me. Ah, ah, Izuku, more ah, yes. She pushed herself up a bit before you shoved her back into her private parts. Izuku started moving fast, banging Mina mercilessly while she licked the wet folds of you. Getting into the kink of the pink-skinned girl, the blonde pulled her hair a bit, while Izuku kept spanking her already purple ass. Mina moaned loud as she licked you clean, which only made you hornier. Izuku then reached for her head and pulled Mina up, cupping her cheeks in one hand while the other squeezed her jugs. He nibbled and whispered on her ears. You want me to hit harder, huh? Why yes, ah, harder. I didn't hear it. Ah, harder. Izuku, oh. Izuku started to have her even harder, probably making use of his quirk a bit. Mina felt her entire body shaking every time he thrust his member inside her. That, along with his strong hands holding her and the light sore sensation on her butt, was driving her crazy. Her eyes were shut thigh due to the pressure he was putting her in. It hurt, but she loved it. Mina then felt another pair of hands pull her from his hold, much to her annoyance. Mimuri made her lean on her hands again and made Izuku back off a little. W wait, Huff put it back in there. Calm down girl, I know what I'm doing. Izuku, let's try something new. Here, put it in there, as Nimuri said that, her fingers made circles around Nina, making the pink-skinned girl shiver. Are you sure, Nimuri? She's clean. They all are, in fact. I didn't need this type of information. Ni ni Nimuri sensei, I'm not sure about this. Don't give me that, you were having fun with my toys, weren't you? It wasn't on purpose, Momo forced me. Also, I'm kinda scared, he's so big. The older woman leaned in and lifted Mina's chin. Surprisingly, she held a warm smile that managed to calm down the pinquette. Relax. Just breathe in, breathe out. There's nothing to worry about, Mina didn't see it. But Nimuri winked at Izuku really quick. Okay, in and out. Huh, actually it were Alma. Without warning and pretty rough, Izuku entered her space with his entire length. The sudden move clearly surprised Mina as her eyes widened and her pupils shrunk to the size of dots. Her mouth hung agape without any sound coming from it and her hands gripped on the bed sheets. Her body shook a little before her torso collapsed on the bed. Her eyes were shut thigh and she gritted her teeth. Izuku, I wasn't ready. The green-haired teen gently ran his hands over her round ass, trying to soothe Mina. I thought you liked it rough. I, I do, it's so big you are going to break me apart. Mimuri helped the pinquette to lean on her hands again. Hang in there a bit. Soon you'll be begging for more. What about you, honey? Enjoying the feeling? Why, yek, it's different, but I really liked it. Ah, really? Without waiting any longer, Izuku moved his hips back and forth first at a slow pace. With each thrust, Mina moaned. In the beginning it hurt a lot, but the more he slid his inside her, more she liked it. The pain wasn't such a big deal once you got used to it. Heck, she was actually liking it. Izuku was widening her gap with his huge delicious member, and she was loving it. The feeling of him reaching deep inside her, the heat of his rock-hard member moving in and out, it was driving her crazy. Every time the tip opened the way inside she let out a loud moan, and then it got better. He held her hips and put his all length as deep as he could, smashing his groin on her ass and thrusting his hips forward, pushing Mina over the edge. She could barely sustain herself on her hands and her breathing was ragged. As he said that, Izuku went much faster, slamming his member inside Mina non-stop, while the girl screamed and moaned in pleasure. He slapped her butt cheeks again, increasing the purple hue already present, much to her delight. Feeling her core on fire, Mina moved a hand between her legs and started to slide three fingers inside her wet hole, moving them as fast as Izuku was banging her. Oh my, it's breaking me your huge member is breaking my tiny hole Izuku. Ah, more gimme that. I want your seeds fill my ass with your hot seed. Ooh, ah, ah. 
Making as she wished, Izuku gave a final thrust and released his seed inside her ass, filling the pink-skinned girl to the brim. Mina also released a wave of her juices while she had a blast. Her body fell on the bed and she gasped for air. Gasp damn, that was awesome pant. Pant again, have me, again Izuku. Mina barely had the strength to speak, still shaken from the intense climax. Okay, just wait a bit, as I do with others. Who's next? He barely finished the sentence, Suyu jumped on him, fiercely kissing him and rubbing their bodies together. Mmmfm and Su, easy there, I'm not going anywhere. I'm really horny, we haven't done anything in a while. Between the assault of kisses, Izuku ran his hand over her cold skin, feeling the curves of her body until they found her butt. Moving his hands a bit further, he noticed she was soaking wet. Izuku didn't wait longer and adjusted himself under her to enter her. Tsuyu guided his member to her entrance and lowered herself on him, quickly moving and picking up her pace. She moaned and sometimes croaked while he had her, holding her and slamming his body against hers. Ribbit more, Izuku go deeper, ooh. Izuku then stopped for a brief moment and rolled on the bed with her, standing on top now. He then lifted her legs up, almost bending Tsuyu in half. This wasn't much of a problem for her since she was pretty flexible. From what he learned with Nimiri, this would allow him to hit other spots inside Tsuyu, and so he slid his member in again, earning more moans from the frog girl. He moved faster and faster, leaning in a bit to hold on her bosoms. He fondled with them, making the frog girl shiver at his touch. I, Izuku, you are so deep inside me. Ooh, yes, have me, Izuku. You are so good to be with. Su Huff, you all are. Drawing some extra energy from his quirk, he increased his strength and speed a bit, making Tsuyu moan even louder. She shook with every thrust and her firm jugs bounced up and down in an almost hypnotic way. Her eyes were kinda unfocused, but they never left his face. Ah, yes, FCK me, Izuku, came all over me. Mm. Sue held him as close as she could. She was near her climax. F, Izuku, I'm gonna climax, I'm gonna ah. Uh. She released her juices on his member, but Izuku kept going. Her body felt numb from her first time, and the only thing she could feel was his member slamming inside her folds. Her eyes rolled up a bit, and her tongue was sticking out. Tsuyu didn't even recover from her first blast, Izuku sped a little more. Tsu, I'm gonna came. Why, yes, came for me. Gee, give me it all, oh, yeah, ah. Uh. One final move, and the released his seed inside Tsu, but he ended pulling it out, spreading the white stuff all over the green-haired girl. It landed on her belly, on her chest, and on her face too. Izuku took a moment to admire the sight in front of him, Suyu licking herself clean, not wasting a single drop. Pant you always, release a lot, she said with a smile on her face. Don't worry Huff, there's more where it came from. I hope so. I need it so bad, Izuku Momo sneaked up behind him and pushed him on the bed, getting on top of the green team. She slowly rocked on his lap while her hands caressed his chest. Izuku, I have something for you. Really? What would it be? Momo lifted a hand with her palm down and used her quirk to create something. It looked like it was just a small red stripe, but at a closer look, it was a cat collar, with a golden tag and everything. Needless to say, Izuku was confused. Momo, what it the collar for? Well dear, you always behave so well. Almost always, to be honest, so I thought of giving you a small gift. This tag has my name. Do you know what it means? That I'm a good boy? That you are my good boy. You love to see me naked like this, don't you? Momo said as she put on the collar, taking some seconds to admire him. You want to FCK me? Yes. She created a pair of handcuffs, locked them around his wrists, and raised his arms above his head. Momo guided his member inside her private part, and they immediately started moving, matching their pace as the sped a bit. Ooh, I missed you inside me, ah, you missed my private part too, right? Yeah, your tight part, it's awesome. Momo moved faster, changing between making circles with her hips and bouncing up and down on his lap. 
Though Izuku also moved his hips, she was the one dictating the rhythm. Momo discovered, Rata realized that she liked to be in control. Seeing her beloved boyfriend under her like this, cuffed and wearing a collar, listening to each one of her commands, it made her almost as horny as the feeling of his length inside her. Almost. While they were at it, Nimiri sneaked upon behind Momo, groping her mounds and squeezing them on her hands, pinching and twisting them lightly. She leaned closer to Momo's ears, whispering in a seductive tone. Have you ever tried hitting his face? I bet you'll love it. Im Midnight Sensei. Ah, I could never do that. Hurting my dear Izuku O oh, when he's such a good boy. Hmm. The dark-haired woman shook her head lightly. And here I thought I found an friend. What about you, you? Oh, oh, yawn a bit busy here, Nimuri. Right now the blonde was being fingered by Toru while she fondled with Kayoka's bosoms. Nimuri just let out a small chuckle. Heh, you don't know how to have fun. I can be, ha, whatever the way you girls like, Izuku said from his place under Momo. Izuku, focus on me, okay? Focus on Momo. The dark-haired girl demanded undivided attention when he was doing it with her, so to make sure of it, she increased the speed. Nimiri then guided her to lean in, pressing her ample chest against his. There. If you want to take the lead, this position is better, despite the situation, Nimiri was still a teacher. Taking advantage of the position, Momo sped up even more, slamming her body against his while she let out louder moans and kissed him. Ah, yes, you like it when I take the lead, right? Ooh, Izuku, you love it when I have you like that? Why, yes, you're so good, Momo. I love to have you too. Ah, Izuku, I'm about to climax. I'm almost there. In the end, Momo gave him some more space and Izuku moved his hips up and down, thrusting into her as fast as he could, which made her scream out of pleasure. One final push and they came together. His hot seed spilled inside her as her walls wrapped around his member and she released her juices, making a hot mess that poured out a bit. Momo let her body fall limp on top of him while she recovered her breath. So hot, Izuku's hot seed inside me. Though he was still feeling yet another climax, he didn't feel tired like the other times. He felt full of energy, so this different form of his quirk was really working. Maybe this way he could keep up with all the lovely and needy girls and women surrounding him. The thought that he would be in situations like the one he was currently in many more times was kind of surreal. So the next to put him into this weird stress test took the place Momo was in as the dark-haired girl rolled out of him. Izuku felt a familiar pressure on his chest, though he could not see the source of it. Good thing Momo made some cheap handcuffs as he easily snapped the chain. My turn, cutie. Toru kissed the teen with her soft lips while her body entwined on his. Her hands ran freely across his chest, shoulders, abs, and arms while her legs rubbed against his lower regions. Izuku returned the treatment, caressing her body with his hands, taking care as if she was made of glass. Given the number of times they had been this intimate, Izuku knew by memory the shape of her body and what spots were more sensitive. Not that he didn't pay attention to these details when he was with the other girls, but with Toru was more of a special thing between them since he couldn't see her and she happened to be one of the more sensitive. That, along with being invisible, meant that every touch was meaningful, every noise she made, the faint smell of lavender and the taste of her mouth were subtle details that got an incredible highlight when he was with her. Toru, in her bubbly and upbeat nature, also seemed to play when they were at it, like right now. She broke the kiss and Izuku felt what he supposed to be her index finger trailing circles on his chest. Me, Izuku, how about we play a little? What do you have in mind? Hmm, try to guess what place your member is in. The invisible girl got up, leaving Izuku at lost for a second, then he felt something soft wrap around his hard member. Her voice came from the same direction, a mix of playfulness and seduction. So, what part of my body you think it is? Judging by the softness and the feeling he was getting, there was little doubt about it. She was clearly pressing her chests around him, moving them up and down at a slow pace, sometimes licking the tip of his. It's your bosoms, Toru. Pin-pon, you're right. Now, what could be the next one? 
once again her touch left him and Izuku waited for the next guess. That was quite interesting, to be honest, not to mention, the curiosity and expectation of discovering how would she please him did add to his turn-on. So the next thing he felt was a more hard sensation, at first pressing his length against his abs. It then changed to a feeling of something wrapping around his member, but not in the same way as before. He felt his member being gently twisted in circular motions, but Izuku couldn't figure out what Toru was doing. He then felt something that gave him a hint, small stubs that he thought were her toes. Toru, are these your feet? Oh, it took you a while, but you found out. You must be a genius, cutie. I don't know about the genius part gasp, but it sure feels different. Fufufu, Ninuri sensei taught me some tricks, do you like it? Why, yeah, it's pretty nice. The invisible girl let go of him again and Izuku waited eagerly to the next turn to guess. This was something he really got interested in. Soon enough he felt a familiar sensation of slender fingers wrapping around the base of his member, followed by the rest of his length being involved in a warm and wet sensation. The muffled moans and a slightly wet noise gave him a hint of where she stuck his member now, but the main point was the feeling of being sucked, along with a well-known tongue making circles on the tip of his member. Izuku hissed and let his eyes close as he enjoyed the blowjob she gave him. That one is easy. It's your mouth. The let go of his member with a pop sound, still gently jerking her hands up and down his member. You are very fond of that, right? What about this one? As she said that, Izuku felt a hot sensation involve his member, along with a familiar pressure of a tight place and some weight on his lap. Come on, Toru hiss of course this is your private part huff. That's because ah you know me very well. Toru moved her hips back and forth, taking it slow and easy, the way she liked. Sometimes she wished to venture into the more rough style Mina loved so much, but she had to admit it was pretty intimidating, to say the least. She was fine with the way her dear cutie had her. Ooh Izuku, you always feel so good inside me. You feel really good too, Toru Huff. His hands wandered to where she should be and Izuku planted them on her ass, making small circles and squeezing her cheeks lightly. The more he caressed her, more soft moans Toru let out. His hands trailed up to her waist and then to her bosoms, fondling with them and gently pinching her. At some point, Toru lifted up a bit and he felt her slender hands rest on his chest for support. Gee, go easy there, okay? What do you mean, Toru Oh, His eyes widened a bit in surprise, but surely not as much as Toru's as she lowered herself into his member. T Toru? Is that ha? Is that your as? Why, yes, you guessed right. Oh my, Izuku, you feel so big inside my tiny as. So tight. He waited a moment as Toru got used to the new feeling, and then slowly started to move his hips. At first, Toru hesitated, lifting up when he moved so he held her waist and pushed her down whenever she tried to escape, as gently as he could. Soon the pain in her moans vanished and she got more and more addicted to the sensation, finally taking his entire length in. Ooh, yes Izuku, inside my tiny hole, it feels so good more. She moved slightly faster as she held on him like her life depended on it. Clinging on the green teen, Toru used a hand to guide his member in and out her. She absolutely loved the feeling of the tip parting her as whole open after a small pressure. She could feel every inch of him moving inside her, slowly stretching her walls and hitting places that made her go crazy. Izuku more, deeper bury that thing deep inside me. Izuku then rolled on the bed with Toru, standing on top now and lifting her hips a bit. He leaned close to her and pushed himself inside as much as he could, making the invisible girl gasp. Is that deep enough? Ah, uh, why, yes. He couldn't help but imagine the face she was making right now, maybe with her mouth agape in an O shape, her eyes rolling to the back of her head. Or perhaps her eyes were closed tight and she had a slightly pained smile crossing her lips. Maybe her eyes were burning with lust and she had an almost silly smile across her face, with some drool on the corner like how Ochako got sometimes. He backed and pushed in again some more, then switched back to her. 
By the wetness and the sensation of her walls tightening even more around his member, Izuku knew she was close to her limit, and so was him. Toru, gasp I'm gonna climax soon. And me too, fill me with your hot seed Izuku. Ah. She came, releasing a wave of her juices on him, pouring out of her wet hole. He didn't last much longer, and with a final deep thrust, he released a stream of white stuff inside Toru, much to her delight. While the invisible girl caught her breath, someone pushed Izuku around. Said someone happened to be you, now resting on her side and supporting her head on a hand, elbow leaning on the bed. Is it my turn now? She asked, but that was more like a statement as she pulled him closer and locked Izuku into a deep kiss, guiding his hands to her chest and private parts. She moaned inside his mouth as Izuku slid two fingers inside her and massaged her bosoms with the other hand. Yu then moved and, still on her sides, lifted her right leg as high as she could. Getting her intentions, Izuku pretty much embraced her toned thigh and lifted her waist a bit, getting on his knees. He adjusted himself while Yu ran her fingers over her entrance, licking her lips with a lustful gaze towards the teen. Izuku slowly inserted his member, earning low moans from the blonde until his crotch met with hers. The smile on her lips widened as she felt his member stretching her walls. Give me that, sweetie. You asked for it. Izuku then started to move, rapidly increasing his pace. With each thrust, Yu moaned and her body moved accordingly, going back and forth as he slammed his member inside her. Yu used her hands to caress and squeeze her jugs, feeling her core burning like a furnace. It was the second time she had sex, and like the first time, she was loving it. There were the age gap and the fact that he was still a student, but his member felt so good and so right moving inside her, expanding her walls and practically messing her up completely. Maybe he was playing with her brain too because she was really considering Ninuri's offer. When she called her to be a temporary teacher, she said you would be much closer to Izuku, something the blonde wanted for known purposes, but the way she put it made it sound like you was actually in love with the kid. Back then, she just wanted to FCK and get that amazing feeling again, but now that she was here, surrounded by teenagers and Nimiri herself, Yu started to think if she should or not enter to this harem full of hormone-driven lovesick girls. Even in the middle of the hot scene, the other girls stopped for a brief moment to acknowledge that Yu had just confessed to Izuku. One could say it was the heat of the moment, but she clearly said she loved him. Yes, having sex was also involved, but by now none of them was in position to judge. Heck, most of the girls, if not all of them, confessed to him while they were in an intimate moment. A small part of Izuku's brain processed this and remembered when Ninuri said you had a crush that would soon turn into love, but he wasn't expecting that to happen so fast. It was the far he could think as every other Neuron was focused on making that hot blondie go crazy. You better prepare your anus. Doing as she said, Izuku got his out and inserted it inside her as whole. She wasn't as tight as Toru or Mina, but she was still amazing, nonetheless. At that position, he could reach deep inside, and his strong pounding was making her whole body shake. Once he sped up, Yu moaned even louder. Her mouth widened into a silly grin, her cheeks had a deep blush, and her eyes were threatening to roll back. If there was any doubt she was loving it before, not it was gone. Her fingers moved furiously in and out her wet hole while Izuku smashed his member into her. As Yu had her blast, she pulled Izuku closer to her, making sure to take all his seed inside her. She shivered in pleasure as his hot fluids tainted her inner walls and filled her, to the point some of it was spilling out. At the same time she came so hard she practically soaked the bed sheets she was in. Her mind was light and Yu relished the bliss she was in right now. Meanwhile, the green-haired teen was snatched in the arms of Kayoka, who embraced him from behind, sucking at his neck while her hands reached between his legs. Following a tip Ninuri passed her earlier, she slowly dragged him to the edge of the bed, then turned him around and latched herself on him, wrapping her arms around his neck and her legs around his waist. Izuku seemed to understand where she was going and stood up, carrying her with him while they kissed. 
Kayoka brushed his hair while Izuku ran his hands on the lower part of her backs, going further down and holding on her butt. She moaned inside his mouth as his hands squeezed lightly and caressed her. Izuku held her under her thighs, so she let go of his waist, spreading her legs wide open. You sure you want to go like that? Sensei told me this way you get full control. Just come and break me. Kayoka looked so determined that Izuku didn't see why he should hold back. Sure, her small frame gave him the impression she could really break, but since was asking so hard for it, what could he do? She adjusted herself a bit, hovering above his hard member. Kayoka let one hand on his shoulder to help her balance, while the other guided his member to her entrance. She bit her lower lip. Her eyes rolled up she and inhaled deeply as he lowered her on his member, letting out her breath once he was completely inside. Izuku moved his hips as he held Kayoka, bringing her back and forth on his member. Kayoka quickly started to shout and moan loud, holding on the green teen for her life. She bounced up every time he smashed it inside her, and she could feel him hitting her sensitive spots again and again, each time harder. The faster he went, the louder she shouted. Kayoka was lost in pleasure, barely managing to keep her hold on his neck. Her nails dug into his backs, making thin red lines on his skin. She felt every mighty thrust send a wave across her body as she bounced up and down, completely controlled by the will of her boyfriend. Izuku, on the other side, felt along with the pleasure of Kayoka's hot and wet hole, a sensation of power, or at least pride. The loud moans and screams she made, he was the cause of them. He was smashing inside her private part relentlessly and Kayoka was loving it. He was the one taking the lead and doing what he wanted with her small frame. Did Nimuri or Momo felt like that when they were the ones in control? Well if so, he could totally understand. Not that he would change it or stop them from having their own ways with him, but at least with Kayoka, he was going to keep that sensation in mind. Ah, oh, ah, oh, Izuku, you are breaking me, shit so big, go faster, push harder, oh my ooh, I wanna, Izuku make me climax, yawn, ah, oh, yes, 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 right there hit me there again, ooh, I'm almost climax, do it with me Izuku, yapa. One final push and Kayoka orgasmed, releasing her juices that mixed with a huge load of seed coming from Izuku. He felt his legs shake a bit and he gently dropped Kayoka on the bed, hovering above her with his hands leaning on the bed. As for her, Kayoka wasn't feeling her legs at all. Izuku barely recovered his breath, another girl was all over him again. Mei grabbed him and tossed the teen on the bed, sitting on his lap and rocking back and forth while she rubbed her on his hard member. Pretty eager, aren't we? Do you know how much I'm waiting, seeing you e with the other girls? You seem to be having fun with you too, Momo, and even Ochako until now. Yeah, it was fun, but what I really want is you burying your huge member inside me. If that's the case, allow me Nimiri got close and made Mei spin around, having her backs turned to Izuku, then made the pinkette lean on her elbows, hovering above the green-haired teen. The woman even guided him to her entrance, then leaned close to his ears and whispered. Do her senseless. Actually, both the teens heard that. For Mei, it only increased the heat in her core. For Izuku, his confidence and overall lust gained a boost. Izuku wrapped his arms around her waist and started to pound her at full speed. Mei's eyes widened as well as her smile as she felt his hot rod sliding inside her folds, stretching her walls, making her mold to the form of his member. Her whole body shook as he smashed her nonstop. Ah, 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 yes, I, Izuku, keep going, ah, ooh, ooh, mm, I'm gonna break, ah. Mei arched her back as she reached her limit. She came so hard Izuku ended a bit soaked under her. Her body fell limp on top of his while her legs trembled a bit. Holy pant, Izuku, I, my legs, gasp, feel like jelly. Already? I didn't even finish with you. You, you serious? She turned a bit as saw the smug look on his face. Mei was pretty happy to hear that. He lifted her again and then slid his it inside her as whole, making Mei gasp as she felt it entering her. 
Once was completely in, he started to move again, as fast as he was before. Though her eyes were closed tight, the grin on her lips was a clear sign that she was liking like that. In fact, anything Izuku did to her would be okay because Mei was sure he only wanted the best for her. And boy, Mei was really relishing every second of this. You are all so tight. The green teen felt his limit coming closer, so Izuku quickly lifted Mei and shifted positions, being on top of her while she laid flat on the bed, still connected. The pinkette leaned on her elbows while Izuku kept thrusting into her, and he took the opportunity to reach for her bosoms, squeezing her huge, soft mounds on his hands. Mei, I'm done now. Inside me, fill me with your seed. Ah, Izuku. Mei shivered with pleasure as she felt his seed blasting inside her. She gripped the bed sheets as he pulled his member even deeper inside two or three times more. I, I, I love this huff. I love you so much, Izuku pant. Gasp me too. I love you too, Mei. All of you. Izuku breathed hard. His quirk was still holding on, which was a huge surprise. Sure, he felt kinda tired, but not exhausted. He may have overestimated this new state, but at least a second round with everyone he thought being possible. Well, am I included in all of you? The question came from Nimiri who got behind Izuku and now ran her hands freely across his body. The sparks of his quirk faded for the first time tonight. Nimiri, I, well, I wasn't exactly referring to absolutely everyone, but, but, but if you want then, well, since you already had some time with the girls, I thought you would want to join, maybe, probably. Oh, how considerate of you. And no, I mean, not only that. The truth was that Izuku loved the night he spent with Nimiri, even if he was cuffed and slapped and psychologically tortured during some time. It was still one of the best days of his life, thought today seemed to be pretty close on the list. Oh Izuku, if you wanted me to join your not-so-little group of horny girls, you should just have told me. Huh? Ah, really? Well, now I say yes without doubt. I played so much with them, and they learned so much too. Not to mention the biggest cause, a certain green-haired teen who stole my heart, and she rested her chin on his shoulder. You are so good to be with, did I mention that before? Yes, everyone did, actually. But the question is, do you love the absolutely stunning woman behind you? I, um, you see, el love is a strong word. Aw, oh, don't you have a little space on your heart for this sexy teacher who cares for you so much? Sure. I do want to H have you see close to me. I mean us. Since you know about everything and... SHHH, don't be so shy. You can tell me if you just want my body. It won't be the first time. No, Izuku then turned around and rested his hands on Nimiri. I won't deny that I really liked to, you know, do that with you. It was really awesome. I mean it. The thing is, I don't want this to be the only thing between us. I mean it's kinda weird since I'm still 16 and you are. Not, but I want to consider your feelings too. The problem is that I'm not sure about how I really feel, so I can't be completely honest and give an answer. It's a bit confusing. I don't know if I like you just because of what happened that night. I mean the part where we, you know, and I fear that I'm fooling myself and in the end, I can hurt your feelings and... Izuku, already on the mumbling train, got cut by a slender index finger, gently placed on his lips, then his face got buried into the great valley of Nimiri's chest. Miss HHH, it's okay. I know you would never hurt me in any way. This is really sweet of you, and don't think about it too much. I like the idea of a wonderful boy like you being attracted to me, even if just by the looks. I'll still love you, honey. I, um... That counts for me, too. You got up from the place she was and wrapped her arms around his torso, hugging him from behind and making sure to press her chest on his back. At this point, Izuku was as red as the human body allowed him to be. Just be honest with yourself. Whatever your answer is, I'll accept it, as long as I can be close to you like this. Who would know you were such a romantic, Nimuri teased the blonde. You are one to talk, miss, I'll still love you, honey, you returned the provocation. 
While the two women inadvertently squished Izuku in a world of softness, the teen took a minute to seek deep within himself how he felt about all this exactly. And much to his annoyance, he could not find a proper answer for the two ladies currently pushing each other's foreheads. Amum, he has drawn the attention of both ladies, who gave him some space between them and looked at the green teen expectant. I, I can't give you two a final answer, but I want this to work out. I mean I want to truly return your feelings because I can see you two care about me as much as the girls and I really want to feel something more than just sexual desire. So if you are okay with it, I want to learn to love you too, just like I learned to love every single one of my girlfriends. He stood there in silence for a long minute, waiting for their answers. When it didn't come he worried of having said something wrong, but in reality, the two grown-up ladies were amused, almost shocked, with the sweet and sincere declaration he just made. It almost broke the fire in them, replacing it with a need to marry this precious cinnamon roll of sunshine. Almost, Izuku lifted his head and opened his mouth to speak, but before the sound could come out, Nimuri tackled him on the bed, locking him into a deep kiss while her hands touched his body everywhere. The way she kissed him, he could tell, was much different from the other times. It was more passionate as if she meant more on it than just pleasure or the intention of make his lungs ache for air. Honestly, Izuku liked it a lot. Her tongue invaded his mouth as she kept deepening the hungry kiss. Her hands trailed to his shoulders, then to his arms, and then to his wrists where she held tight and lifted his arms above his head. As she broke the kiss, Izuku heard a sound of clicking. Looking up at his hands, he round cuffs around his wrists again. Nimiri returned to kiss him, running her hands over his chest and making light marks on his skin with her nails. She broke the kiss again, hovering above him and staring intensely at his eyes. And when he last expected, Izuku received a stinging slap on his right cheek. The just let his head the way it was, turn to the left, as he was focused on processing what just happened. Wasn't Nimuri kissing him passionately just now? So why the slap? He felt her silky hands make contact with the other side of his face, also leaving a stinging sensation, prompting Izuku to make eye contact with the woman above him. Nimuri, what was that F slap? Oh, Nimuri. She cupped his cheeks on her hand and kissed him again before answering. Sorry, I can't help it. What you just said, it made me so happy that she licked her lips. My sadist side just turned on. Um, what? Don't get me wrong, I love you, but I can't help it. Seeing you like this, you are begging to be spanked, I want to know. I have to hit you so good you won't ever forget it. I, ooh, this is the way I show my love. Can you accept it? Izuku hesitated to a moment, unsure about the implications of a relationship with Nimuri and her unique way of showing affection. That hesitation just lasted a moment. Yes, I'll accept it. Do whatever you feel you need to do. I know you'll not hurt me, kind of. As he said that, Izuku received another slap across his face. Looking up, Nimiri held a look full of lust and the sadistic grin she had the other night. He would grow used to it, Izuku was sure. Her hands made their way to his lower regions, leaving tiny scratches all the way down, and Nimuri wrapped her fingers around his hard member, putting pressure on her hold until she heard Izuku wincing. She loved the face he did when she bent it in her hands. He was completely under her control. Nimuri kissed him again and lowered her hips, putting his member inside her wet hole and started to move her hips quite roughly, slamming her body against his. As always, she didn't give him the chance to breathe until she felt Izuku desperate for air. While the teen gasped for air, she dug her nails on his shoulders, enough to draw little blood drops. H hands then traveled over his chest and moved to his neck. Nimuri put her fingers around his neck one by one and then started to tighten her grip, at the same pace she increased the speed her hips moved. Uo, your member is the best. Izuku, you said you would be whatever we wanted, right? How is it to be an M-type? Oh, ah, uh, it's pretty different, right? Yes, ah, uh, ah, uh, how do you like the wet part of your teacher? Huh? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I, it's amazing, Izuku said between tentatives to breathe. 
His lungs ached and his throat was sore, but still Nimri gave him so much pleasure that all the pain faded into it. One hand left his neck to hit his face again. Izuku managed to activate his quirk and started to move his hips up and down, matching her pace. He was going deep inside her and hitting sensitive spots time after time. Yes, right there, Izuku. Ooh, keep going. More. Have your teacher. Ah, uh, Izuku, make me climax. Give me your seed, honey. And Nimiri, I'm almost there. It was hard to breathe, and that amount of movement only made Izuku even more short-breathed. His vision was blackening and his mind was between foggy and rushing with the feeling of being choked. He gave a last push, speeding up a bit more. Nimiri bounced on him, feeling every thrust inside her. Her body felt the waves coursing, making he huge mounds follow as she moved up and down. Her walls tightened around him and she slammed herself on him a last time before they came together. Nimiri bit at his neck as she felt his hot seed filling her inwards, mixing with her own juices. Pleasure washed over her body and she let herself fall on top of him, feeling his chest rise and fall while he desperately tried to catch his breath. Damn, huff I feel like gasp I get more pant than I deserve. Don't feel like this. You deserve every single bit of this. I'm all yours, honey. I had always been yours, Deku-kun Ochako made her way on top of him, sharing the space with Nimiri. One by one, all the girls somehow hold on him, almost stacking on top of the green-haired teen. Knee muscles, you up to another round? Mina, he must be exhausted by now. Actually, Momo, I'm still feeling full of energy. Ooh, I like to hear that, cutie. Ribbit, so you are not done yet. All of them had their eyes focused on him, so Izuku couldn't help but feel a little bit nervous inside. Well, I love them all equally. Guess it can't be helped. If I have to black out after that, so be it. There was some shifting here and there and Momo and Ochako ended holding on each side of Izuku. Nimiri stepped in and guided them so Momo laid on the bed with Ochako on top. She spread the legs of both girls and dragged Izuku closer. So, honey, isn't it a beautiful view? Izuku stared at both girls, their chests squished together and their wet holes rubbing against each other, inviting him to join the fun. Ochako and Momo looked at him with expectant eyes take screamed take me for him. Waiting no longer, Izuku slid between them, rubbing in on both girls while they moaned lightly and moved their hips. The feeling was amazing for him, something completely new, but Izuku wanted more. He decided himself on having Ochako and Momo together right there. So first he entered Ochako, sliding two fingers inside Momo, and started to move his hips. Both girls moaned louder and called for his name together. Ah, yes, Izuku give me more, I want your member deep inside me, Ochako shouted. Izuku, me too Momo begged between moans. Attending her wish, Izuku quickly changed and now was having Momo while he fingered Ochako. By now the girls were exchanging kissed and groping their jugs, squeezing each other and relishing on the pleasure Izuku was giving them. He kept changing between Ochako and Momo, then suddenly he got out and rubbed his member between Ochako's butt cheeks. The brunette looked back at him with a surprised face. Izuku? You don't want me to? No, take Maya's too. Hey, wait for your turn, Momo. Ochako, is now the best time to be so childish? I'll show you the child. Both of you behave or else I'll have to force you, Izuku said, that as he was halfway inside Ochako. Oh, oh, okay, it's so big, and it isn't even completely inside. Momo muffled her moans by kissing the brunette, while Izuku increased his speed, holding Ochako's plump as on his hands. After that he changed and went inside Momo, who also got caught by surprise. Aaa, Izuku? Yan Maya's just got invaded ooh, it's deep inside. Damn you all are so delicious to have. Izuku gradually picked his pace, making both Momo and Ochako shake as he banged the dark-haired girl. Now and then he changed from Momo to Ochako, making sure to give them equal time, until he felt he was near his limit. Izuku then leaned over Ochako and slid his member inside her again, going at full speed and sucking at the base of her neck. 
A A A A Izuku harder. I'm gonna climax. I'm gonna aha. Her backs arched and her tongue stuck out a bit. Then Ochako let her body fall on top of Momo with her head blank from her orgasm. After that, Izuku pushed her up a bit and adjusted himself, going inside Momo at full speed again. Ooh, yes, yes, Izuku, have me more, I want my good boy. Ah, it's coming, ah. Her legs twitched a little as Momo felt her orgasm washed through her body. Also lightheaded, she just stood there, panting heavily. When the two girls got back to earth, they saw Izuku on his knees, waiting for them, and you right behind him jerking him off. Come on, ladies. Don't you want a fresh dose of milk from our precious boy? Both girls crawled and sat on the bed like two cats and stuck their tongues out, waiting for their milk. Izuku averted his eyes, but you used her free hand to bring his head to face the scene. They are waiting for your milk, I. Zu. Ku. The blonde kept moving her hand until he released his seed, sending a huge load of white stuff all over Ochako and Momo. It landed on their laps, on their chests, a bit on their mouths, and most of it straight on their faces. So much came out, Ochako said, giggling a bit. Yes, it's amazing, Momo said and laughed lightly. That was a scene he found himself unable to avoid watching, and it got better. They took some of his seed with their fingers, but out of nowhere they held on each other and started to lick it from their bodies, not leaving a single drop behind. The duo then came, cleaning any traces of his seed they could find, until you pulled him away. Hey, slow down ladies, everyone wants a second. The way they looked at him as you pulled Izuku away was almost like she took a piece of them with her, which made the blonde wonder just how thirsty these girls were for him. They were comprehensive at least, so now she had Izuku to herself. Yu quickly turned around while dragging him and rested her chest on the bed, leaving her butt up and in front of the team. She wiggled a bit, inviting him to go ahead, and even sent him a wink. Izuku too a minute to admire the sight in front of him, M.T. Lady's round bottom and her pink wet hole, just waiting for him. Not wasting more time, Izuku held firmly on her waist and started to bang her, moving her hips back and forth. Ooh, that's it harder, Izuku, harder. Mm. He pulled out and wiped some of her juices with his fingers, spreading it around her as all, which made you shiver in anticipation. Izuku then slid his member inside her, earning some loud moans from the blonde, but before he could move, Nimiri pushed him forward, making him rest on his hands. Just a little hint, that way you'll go deeper and hit a different spot. Go get her, honey. Izuku then started with you hard, banging her and making her whole body shake as his crotch hit her butt. Meanwhile, Nimiri licked and fingered her, driving the blonde crazy. Ah, 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 yes, Izuku. Ooh, I want you all the way in so big da. Oh, yes, harder. Ah, I'm almost too. And Nimiri, ah, Izuku, I'm gonna, I'm ya. Yeah. Yu let out a stream of her juices flow from her, almost soaking the bed if it wasn't for Nimiri taking most of it. A little after Izuku came inside her, filling her so much that some of his seed spilled when he took it out. Yu, who tensed her body when she reached her climax, let her body slide flat on the bed, feeling the warmth of his seed inside her as old. The next to hold on him was Mei, who dragged him out of the bed while kissing until her backs hit the wall. You want to go like this? Midnight Sensei said this is very intense. Is it a problem to lift me? Not a single bit. Izuku locked her into another tongue kiss while he pressed his body against hers, holding under her tights and lifting Mei up while she wrapped her legs around his waist and hooked her arms on his neck. With a little shift, he entered her wet part, going deep and pressing his crotch against hers. He started to move, not going much back, but still hitting her hard and fast. May held on him tighter as she felt his hot rod moving inside her and her walls taking the form of his member. They came together and May held him as close as she could, almost taking the air out of his lungs. Izuku felt her inwards squeezing his member as he unloaded his seed inside her. Even after her orgasm, May remained clung on him, so he had to carry her back to the bed, still connected. Izuku laid her down, but she didn't let go until Tsu kind of forced her to. 
The frog girl took May's place, clinging on him for her life while she tasted his mouth in a deep kiss. Izuku just laid on the bed and let Tsuyu take the lead. At some point, Nimiri whispered something on her ears. Ribbit, seriously? Why not give it a try? For some reason, Tsuyu gulped and turned to look at Izuku under her and with a slightly confused look. The green-haired girl then lifted up and slowly made a split, hovering centimeters above his shaft. This, of course, made Izuku concerned. Sue, are you sure you want to go like that? Well, Sensei said it would be nice since I'm more flexible than the average. Trust me, this is gold. I would do it myself, but you can open that split much better than me, Nimiri assured her. Nimiri then landed both hands on Tsuyu's shoulders and lowered the girl on Izuku's shaft until he was completely inside. Each centimeter going inside made her gasp as she felt her walls being stretched in a whole new way. Izuku also noticed the difference, feeling her wrapping around his member like she was molded to him. After a minute to catch the breath, Izuku held her by her waist and started to move her up and down, effectively driving Tsu crazy. Her tongue was sticking out and her eyes seemed out of focus as if her mind was covered with a dense fog. Her hands rested on his abs and trailed his toned muscles. <sighs> Ribbit so thick Izuku, you are breaking me uo. Ribbit it's going deep inside me. I'm being parted in two ah uh, more, Izuku. Izuku couldn't focus on anything else than bringing Tsuyu down on him time after time. It was too good to have her, just like all the girls. He was starting to get addicted to it. You are so tight right now, Tsu gasp. You like to feel me inside, don't you? Hiss. Yes, yes, I love it, I love it so ah, so much. Izuku, uo, I'm gonna climax. Tsuyu released her juices as she came hard on his member. The girl had to lean her hands on his chest as she felt her body lose strength. She stared at his eyes' intensity, hers filled with emotions, unlike her usual plain looks. She lifted her hips a bit, taking out his member and guiding it to her bottom, poking the tip on her as ol, temptingly. Izuku held her waist again and slowly lowered Tsuyu, putting his entire length inside. He bounced her on his lap again, this time a little faster, making Tsu moan louder as she played with her. Uo, yeah Izuku, take my tiny gap, ah, rib it inside me, fill me with your thick cane, ah. A final push and Izuku unloaded a stream inside Tsu, rolling his head back as he did so. While he panted, Tsuyu fell on his chest, snaking her tongue into his mouth and rolling it around his own. She pulled him into another kiss that didn't last much as she felt hands holding her waist and dragging her away from him. Turns out it was Toru. The invisible girl took Tsuyu's place and straddled Izuku. By the way, her hands were touching him, she had her backs to him. He was sure of it when he felt her tongue running up his length, so he joined her and searched for where her waist should be, pulling her closer to his face and shoving his face on her private parts. Toru let out a squeal and a low moan in sequence, lowering herself and sucking him right after. She took her own pace, nice and slow, managing to swallow his whole length inside her mouth, even if with some difficulty. The way she sucked him was so full of care it almost looked cute. On the other side, Izuku was licking her clean, tasting every drop of her juices and rubbing his thumbs in circles on her. He bit her lightly and then blew air, making Toru shudder every time. The teen then stuck his tongue as deep as he could, aiming for the source of fluids that seemed endless. Toru moaned on him as she bobbed her head, fondling with his balls with her free hand. It was already tricky enough to not gag while he ate her like that, but he went further and slid a finger wet with her juices and his saliva inside her, which took her completely off guard. She coughed a little, which made Izuku stop. Toru, are you okay? Cough Yesahem, just got surprised. A good surprise, I hope. Oh yes, a delicious surprise. He could almost see the horny look on her face. She resumed to s uck his member much more intensely now, and Izuku returned to eat her out, sliding a second finger inside her and making circles with his free hand on her butt cheeks. Toru moaned louder and louder and wiggled her butt, taken by the pleasure Izuku was giving her. 
Feeling her limit getting near, she picked up her pace, using a hand to jerk him while she sucked and licked his member, making some wet noises. Izuku responded by shoving his face as deep as it could go between her legs, reaching deep with his tongue. Hmm, <laughs> guy yes, Izuku, you're so good, keep eating me, more I'm going to climax, ooh, yawn, she shouted as she kept jerking him off. Not a minute later Toru felt her orgasm wash through her body and Izuku came, covering her chest and face, apparently, with his seed. She let her body fall limply to the side, using her index finger to wipe the white stuff from her body and eat it. While she was at it, Izuku got pulled up by Kayoka. Her onyx eyes were full of lust and completely focused on him. Kayoka then got on the edge of the bed and rested her upper body on the mattress, letting her knees touch the carpet. She looked back at Izuku, and she had a seductive grin that taunted him to take her. So, what are you waiting for? Nothing. He wasn't waiting for anything at all. Izuku held firmly on her hips and aligned to enter her. Kayoka held on the bedsheets in anticipation and her head rolled back when she felt his member making its way inside her. Izuku moved his hips at a fast pace but careful enough to not hurt her. No matter how much he tried, he couldn't help but feel he could really break Kayoka if he used excessive strength. The purple-haired girl was loving it nonetheless, shouting and calling his name. Ah, Izuku, shit so huge, it's getting even bigger. Ah, yes, more, give me more, Izuku. I feel like I could break you in two, Kayoka. Break me, break me, Izuku pulled out and right after entered her, sliding a finger inside her anus. She kept screaming and holding the sheets for her life. Kayoka looked back at Izuku with lustful eyes, biting her lower lips, holding her shouts for a moment. She was begging him to go further, and so he did. Izuku was now banging her hard, not aggressive enough to compare to him and Mina, but still pretty wild. Her mouth stood open in a wide smile. Kayoka shouted and moaned loud, her eyes rolled up a little, and her tongue was sticking out. Ah, ah, yes, more Izuku, have me good, uo, yan Izuku. Kayoka, I'm almost. Izuku gave a final thrust and held her in place, filling Kayoka with his seed. Kayoka arched her back, her toes curled, and she felt a jolt course through her body. Then she fell on the bed, breathless and lost in pure bliss. Izuku gave a gentle tap on her butt and crawled back on the bed. Apparently, he was reaching his physical limit but there was still two more to go. Speaking of which, Mina jumped on him and brought Izuku down on the bed, running her hands across his body and feeling his muscles while she kissed him passionately. Her legs entwined on his and Izuku noticed she was soaking wet. Just looking at her face was enough to tell Mina was eager to have her second round with him. Always aiming to please, Izuku got on his knees and lifted Mina with him, holding her head at his waist level. Mina looked up at him with expectant eyes. Will you treat me well, Izuku? Oh, sure. I'll treat you very well, Mina. There it was. The predatory look she was waiting for. Izuku was a sweetheart, but when it came to sec, she liked this side of him much more. He ran a hand across her pink locks, then it turned into a closed fist and Izuku shoved his member on her mouth. Mina, on all fours, let him take the lead completely, relishing the rough treatment. He held her head with both hands and made her swallow him completely and without mercy. Mina had to put a lot of effort into not gagging, but sometimes she felt she would puke. The taste of Izuku was delicious to her. In fact, she was having a taste of every single girl in there too, herself included. At some point he let go of her head so Mina held on his waist and kept deep-throating while he leaned forward and slapped her bottom again, hitting exactly the still visible purple marks. The stinging sensation was making her even more horny and wet. The dark-haired woman took him into her arms and laid him in the middle of the bed. Nimiri reached for something under the bed, wiggling her rear up while she hummed and searched for the object. She found it, and when Izuku saw what was on her hands, he swallowed dry. Nimiri had her whip on her hands. The many leather stripes were entwined into a single red string that she snapped, making a loud and unnerving sound. The girls and even you looked as uneasy as Izuku, so the blonde decided to intervene, just to be safe. 
Omum, Nimiri, aren't we going too far? Oh, don't worry girls, I'm not going to hurt him. She looked at him again. Much. She licked her lips seductively and shot at the teen her sadistic grin. Mimiri reached under the bed again and took a small chain that she locked on the collar he was still using, pulling it quite roughly to be sure it was secure. You like it when Momo calls you a good boy, but you also play the bad guy with Mina. Let's see how much can you be my type. As she said that, Nimiri gave a strong pull on the chain, hurting Izuku a little on the neck. He landed on top of her with his face between her huge valley. Another pull on the chain, and he looked up at her, sensing that he had a task to accomplish. Given his position, he started to suck at her jugs, the right choice since Nimiri patted his head and brushed his green hair. He reached with his hand to grope the free one, but he received a whip on his hand, instantly backing off and holding the sore spot, but Nimuri whipped him again on the leg. Oh, what did I do wrong? I didn't say you should use your hands, neither that you could stop. How was I supposed to know? Want another whip? Izuku quickly resumed his task, now sucking at her other bosom. Nimuri embraced him like he was a baby, feeding on the milk of his mother, which gave Izuku a weird feeling. Probably it was part of her plan, make him embarrassed. After that she laid her backs on the bed and pulled the chain down, making him face her private parts very closely. Come on, you know what to do. He bent down just a little further and stuck his tongue inside her slit. But the whip snapped close to his leg and he backed off. Not so fast, take your time. Izuku decided to start by just licking around her entrance, tasting some of her juices that were already leaking. Nimiri moaned lowly and let her head fall back as she let him do his work. A small pull on the chain and Izuku went a little further, just opening her folds with his tongue. Oh yes, just like that you really are talented, honey. Another pull and now he stuck his tongue in, tasting more of her. Izuku focused on licking her clean and tempted to rub his fingers on her. Luckily for him, Nimuri not only allowed that she also pushed his head further between her legs with a hand. A small shift and she made Izuku face her bottom. He hesitated for a bit, but the whip snapped on him again. Don't worry, I'm completely clean. Still hesitant, he stuck his tongue on her as ol. There was the taste of every other girl and something slightly bitter, probably lube or something like that. On the other side, her eyes were rolling to the back of her head and she couldn't stop from smiling. Oh, that's it, keep going, Izuku. Yes, 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 ooh, my ah. Uh. Nimiri sat up and pulled the chain with her. She dragged Izuku around like this to the couch where she stood on her knees. Nimiri rested her elbows on the couch and pulled Izuku to stand behind her. Come on, don't leave me waiting. He held on her waist, ignoring the possibility of another whip, and started to slam his member inside her. Nimiri's body moved with every pound, so each time the chain on her hand pulled his collar, bruising his neck lightly. Good thing Momo made it loose enough and quite soft. She pulled again, and he picked up his pace until she told him to stop. Nimiri then turned around and brought him closer to her body, lifting her legs above his shoulders. Izuku pulled out of her as and quickly slid inside her. Since there were no whips, he was doing the right thing. He began to bang Nimiri again, now having the wonderful view of her whole body following his moves, her bosom bouncing as he slammed his member inside her. Nimiri pulled him closer by the chain and rolled her whip around his neck, making it tighter and tighter until she felt his throat was constricted enough. Even with the pressure, Izuku kept doing her with the same energy rather he seemed to get even faster and stronger. He had to lean on her shoulders to support himself as his vision was blackening on the corners. By now the lack of air was something he was getting used to, at least while he was with Nimiri. She gave him some slaps across the face. Nimiri simply loved the softness of his cheeks and the sound it made when she hit him like that. His member was hitting her sweet spots and he didn't slow down a single bit despite being obviously exhausted. It was lovely that he went so far to give his girls what they wanted from him, she thought. At that moment Nimiri wrapped her legs around his waist, making Izuku go even deeper inside her. She pulled the chain and locked him into a kiss as Izuku came too. 
her walls clamped his member, milking away all of his hot seed. After the bliss, Nimiri got up and helped him stand up, then called all the other girls to be at her side. There, somehow aligned in two rows, they stood on their knees, mouths open and tongues sticking out while Nimiri gave Izuku a handjob. The teen was barely standing now. Izuku felt a surge of energy build up inside him again until he reached his limit, unloading his milk for who knows what time this night. It splashed everywhere, covering the girls and women from his harem. Izuku, breathing heavily, slowly focused on the scene in front of him. All these women kneeled before him with their mouths open and showing some white stuff inside, then swallowing it and now showing their tongues clean. The scene was so hot and stunning that he felt dizzy. It could be his physical limitations and his body screaming that he went too far on this. The sparks subdued completely. Izuku just fell back on the bed behind him, his face deep red and a wide smile crossing his face. With the last traces of consciousness he had, Izuku said something as he felt his harem climbing on the bed with him. Ha, ha, amazing, pant you all, are awesome, ha, I love you all girls. Before any of them could answer the teen, Izuku felt asleep. Hey, did you hear that? He said I love you all. Don't be so forward, sensei. Deku-kun still needs to think about it. Ochako, did you forget I can still have you as good as him? Oh, of course, I'm sure he'll say yes. There's no reason for him to say no, right, girls? She answered nervously. Phew, um, since you are such a lovely and caring teacher, I'm sure Izuku will agree, may try to back Ochako up. Oh, good to hear you agree too. We are going to be a big happy family. When you say family, you mean, ribbit, a wedding is going to happen? Well, who knows? How would it be a marriage with this harem? Nimiri wondered as she cuddled near the sleeping teen. After her came Ochako, then Toru, Mina, Momo, Mei, Kaioka, Yu, and Suyu. They pulled a huge blanket and covered themselves along with Izuku. They all felt somehow tired thought none of them could compare to the exhaustion Izuku must have been feeling. They kissed him goodnight, earning a small mumble from the teen. Even while sleeping he was so caring and sweet. Before falling asleep, Nimiri remembered something important. Oh right. Hey girls, we all have to take a pill tomorrow. Don't forget. She got answered with many okays, then the dark-haired lady let herself fall asleep. The next morning came and Izuku was the first to wake up, confused and disoriented. He thought about the wild dream he had last night, but when he noticed the pile of girls on top of him, completely naked, let's point out, the memories flushed into his mind and Izuku spent the next five minutes reflecting on the fact that he had sex with nine girls last night. What was the record for an orgy anyway? No, 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 that's not the right thing to think. What time is it? If everyone is here, the guys back at the dorm will notice that we went missing. Izuku sat on the bed, but immediately was drawn back by a set of arms and a tongue. No, just more five minutes muscles. Ribbit, let's stay here for today. I totally agree, Tsu-chan. Suyu Toru, we should head to school. But, just five minutes, Momo said between yawns. Come on, girls. You have class and I have lessons to teach. The group slowly got out of the bed, heading one after another to the bathroom. Shower taken, Nimiri gave each one of them a single pill and one to herself that they swallowed dry. Izuku wished to tell them about the effect of his quirk, but that would also be revealing that he was the successor of All Might. Well, someday he would have to tell. Moving on, with some rush they managed to return to the dorms before most of the class was up. Izuku and his harem took breakfast normally, as if nothing had happened, and went to the classroom. The day went quickly as Aizawa-sensei passed a lot of theory and All Might coordinated the training, an elaborated obstacle course in which you had to save people while you progress. Everything was perfectly normal until the explosive hothead decided he had unfinished business with Midoriya. Oi, Deku! Bakugu stomped his way to the green teen and held on the collar of his training uniform as usual. K. Kachin, what do you want? You know what it is, you nerd. I still have to kick your sorry as from last week. 
Tachin, we already got in trouble because of that discussion. Can't we leave it alone and... Shut up. Did you think I would that pass after your pathetic try to defeat me? I'll make you kiss the floor, that is your place. Bakugu brought a fist back and Midoriya was ready to go on full cowl and counter it, but the two boys received a not-so-light knock on their heads. Again with that shit ah. Bakugu expected to find Midnight, but to his surprise M.T. Lady was standing in front of him. All Might, who was taking his medicine, just arrived and found the commotion. M.T. Lady, what is happening here? Don't worry All Might, I've got this. I was passing by when this hothead here was looking for a fight. But we are all fine now, right? I bet you learned your lesson during the week you got house arrested. You held a smug grin that infuriated Bakugu because he knew there was nothing he could do about it. TSC. Damn nerd. Saved by the bell. Did I hear you murmuring something, young man? Nothing of your concern, temporary Bakugu left still murmuring, but he stopped once he felt a hand hold on his wrist. Who would be so stupid to make this move? He turned around and met with emerald eyes and green hair. Of course, shitty Deku. Kachin, that wasn't a nice thing to say to MT. Lady. The blonde was barely containing himself, gritting his teeth to stop his fists from hitting that piece of trash in front of him. And what will you do about it? Can you even do something, useless Deku? I will. Huh? I didn't hear it. What will you do about it, Deku? Bakugu held on his collar again, almost throwing away the last straw of his very limited patience. But then he felt a tap on the shoulder. How could be it be now? The F you want, you owe. Manner your tone of voice with me, young man. I'm not as nice as I look like Midnight appeared, and now she was pinching Bakugu's ear hard. She didn't release him until he let go of Midoriya. Frustrated that he could not let his anger out, Bakugu decided to leave, but not before knocking some sense on that thick head of Deku. Listen here, Deku. You can think you won something, but in the end, you'll have to face that you can't beat me in any way. He looked at the group of girls approaching him, then got closer and said the last part in a lower tone. Hurry up and die as the shitty virgin you are. And with that, he spun on his heels and left. After hearing that, and after last night, something clicked inside Midoriya's mind. He had been taking this kind of shit his whole life in silence from Kachin. He thought that he had respect for him, even admiration. But the more he progressed with one for all, more he noted that he didn't want to admire Katsuki. Midoriya wanted to surpass him, exactly because the explosive blonde was so strong and skilled. It was his goal to surpass. Yes, Midoriya still respected him both as a hero, but he just had enough of that bullshit. So he decided to take action, even if hesitant. W. Well, Kachin, in that L last part, I already beat you by a mile. Bakugu stopped dead in his tracks. He slowly turned around, glaring missiles at the green team. What did you just say? All Might was about to intervene, but Midnight signaled for him to stay away. Midoriya was slightly nervous, but he still shone a smug grin as he looked at the short fuse team. I said, I beat you by a mile in this. You know what I'm T talking about, right? Bakugu quickly understood what he meant, and he started to laugh as if Midoriya had told him a joke. No, he was the joke. You kidding me? Ha ha ha. You wouldn't do it even if you paid for it. Maybe shitty Popsicle could accept if you asked him, but you would be just too small to do any shit. Me, Kachin, if you behave, T then maybe I can G give you a round. Bakugu stopped laughing instantly. His rage was back at full strength. What was that? Repeat that if you want to die so bad. Who knows, Kachin, you could end liking it, Midoriya said, feeling more confident as the time passed. If you are feeling so bold you can try, but I won't guarantee you'll want to leave after. He finished his taunt and crossed his arms. The blonde looked at Midoriya as if he suddenly grew a second head. Bakugu noticed in the background the girls with dumb faces and a light tinge of red on their cheeks. Temporary was the same and Midnight seemed amused with something. There was no way Deku did it. With so many girls, and most important before him. No, no, he was up to some shit. He had to be. Still, the way these bitches were looking at him. No shit. 
Face it, Katchen. That battle you lost. You lost really bad, Midoriya threw the truth on his face, making him shake in anger. Meanwhile, the rest of the class, still hearing them, got multiple reactions. Some were utterly shocked, others were somehow impressed, proud even. Siro himself didn't know exactly what he felt about the whole situation, while Kirishima was in an internal conflict, whether this was a manly thing or not. Ida froze in place, internally crying of happiness and sadness because his ship could pretty much be real or not. Todoroki, oh Todoroki. The icy hot teen was a mess of thoughts right now, mostly because of the accusations that he could have some gay tendencies. So, should he be happy for Midoriya that he succeeded in his personal life? Or should he feel envy, and envy of who exactly? Between the small chat what was rising and All Might's apparent inability to take a hint, Bakugou blasted into an explosion of shouts and curses directed at the sky, earth, and this plane of existence as a whole, unable to stop the blasts on his hands and launching great flame towers up. He left angered and stomping his feet on the ground. Oi, Bakubro, wait up, we can sort this out, man. Kirishima went after the enraged boy, while the rest of the class observed in shock and awe. Meanwhile, Minta, crying blood rivers, hit his tiny fist on the floor, feeling utterly defeated. Midoriya, of all people, got laid before him, apparently much more than one time. So, did he really? Ajiro asked Shoji, who was by his side. The masked tall teen just shook his head, not knowing how to answer. It could pretty much be just a prank Midoriya came up with to make Bakugu angry, though it was highly questionable if the green teen would do something like that. No one said he did something, neither Midoriya nor any of the girls, but they also didn't deny it, and they weren't going to accuse their friends without concrete proofs. That would pretty much define the mood in Class 1A for the next few weeks. It was an unspoken fact that everyone preferred to avoid mentioning or even thinking about. Most of the guys stood a few meters away as the girls dispersed and All Might came to Midoriya, apparently wanting him to clarify what exactly was the cause of this contend. Dark shadow sprouted from Tokoyami's back, hiding his face with a claw. HM 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 ha ha ha, it has finally come. Revelry in the dark, said Takoyami, along with his classmates. Bonus chapter. In a large room, warm enough to be considered comfy, the dim light of a small screen broke the shadows, illuminating a small figure, even if just a little. Whoever the person was, it was completely focused on the screen that replayed a video sequence full of bright colors and flashes that didn't seem to hurt its eyes, despite the dark ambient. Yellow cat-like orbs watched with much attention the footage of UA's sports festival, particularly a certain fight between an icy hot teen and another boy known for self-inflict damage to his body while fighting. The person laid on a small bed, resting the chin on her hands while her legs moved back and forth, and she happily hummed an unknown song. Upon seeing the green-haired teen fighting and getting badly hurt by using his own quirk, a Cheshire cat grin made its way on her lips. Her slender hands cupped her cheeks, locked into a permanent blush. The video rolled back and paused at a scene that showed Midoriya visibly in pain, and a finger touched the screen, tracing the figure of the boy. Midoriya Izuku, Toga Himiko, let out a sigh that could pretty much be one of a girl in love, if you ignored the knife on her other hand. I wonder, how does your blood taste like? I bet it is sweet, though it usually has a coppery taste, but you are special, right? A sound of knocking came from the door, and the infatuated blonde girl sat on her bed, welcoming her visitor, a tall man with dark hair and pretty ugly burns on his body, most notably on his jaw. Again with this video. You must have added 10,000 views already. Dabai, what brings you to my soon-to-be love nest? He eyed her as if she was crazy like more than she already was. Love nest? What are you talking about? Don't tell me you're falling for twice or some shit like that. Not that it matters anyway. Toga waved a hand at him. No, silly, twice is just an idiot I like as a friend. I think I found him, Dabai. Found who? My soul mate, the person destined to meet me. Isn't it awesome? She looked back at the screen and touched it, sighing as she watched Midoriya getting hurt again. 
Dabai, summoning all his patience, ran a hand through his hair and let out a tired breath. He didn't have time to this bullshit. Listen, Toga. You better don't forget that Shigaraki has plans for this teen, so don't make anything stupid. When did I ever make something stupid? I could give you a long list. We are supposed to meet twice and compress at one of the hideouts. Don't get late, he said and turned around to leave her room but stopped briefly. Dabai spotted from the corner of his eyes a large image with a familiar mess of green hair. What was really worrying about it was the even larger heart drawn around it, and knowing Toga, this red wasn't paint. Also, there were dozens of photos scattered on the floor and pinned on the wall. Did he just saw a kiss mark? Toga, whatever it is that you think is happening between you and this guy, stop. Just. Stop Dabai was pondering setting this sick collection on fire, but then Toga would be whining on his ears for who knows how long, so he just left the room, remembering that it wasn't his problem. Toga, always wearing her fanged and wide smile, waved goodbye at him and got up from her bed, walking to the wall where the image of her interest was. It had a pretty bad resolution since the image had been amplified and slightly distorted, but for her it was enough. She risked herself a lot taking this picture, just like the others she had. Her hands trailed his face on the image and then touched the red marks around it. Hmm, it's getting dry. I need to paint it again. I'll use arterial this time. It's much more vibrant. The blonde in sailor uniform twisted a strand of her messy hair into a finger as she walked around her room, reading things she had written on other walls. Observations, detailed routines, maps with pads highlighted, and an image with a target on it. It showed the face of a brunette with brown round eyes and cheeks marked with pink spots. The grin on Toga's lips widened even more as she bit the tip of her thumb, eager to see her betrothed one. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Everyone Gets Obsessed With Deku And Had Harim? I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Guy Number 23 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on FanfictionNet for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to What If Deku 2 for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.